want us to do the best we can to redeem the time. Amen. I'm excited every time I have the opportunity to come before us and teach because I have learned through experience that one of the ways to bless people is to enlighten them. Hallelujah. You can give people money, you can give people privileges, but one of the ways you bless people is to enlighten them. Unfortunately, we live in a generation that frowns at enlightenment because enlightenment is intangible and we have been trained by our environments to be carnal. We always want something we can hold and relate with here and now, such as money, clothes, cars, and all of these very, very mundane things. But the informations that are intangible, that empower us, usually we do not have the patience to submit. Uh, I was having a conversation with one of the protocol people while I was on my way coming, and I was driving and I looked at him, he was sitting at the other side, and I was wondering why I was looking at him while I was driving at the same time. And I told him, I said, look, my friend, you will never succeed in life if you are not mentored and trained. And he looked at me, I said, listen carefully to what I'm about to teach when we come. And I was giving him instances. I have learned and I am more convinced than ever before that training and mentorship is how successful people are made. It's not one of the ways. It's the only way. There are no options. Any other person giving you an option is a sign that he doesn't know what he's saying. Their mentorship and training is the only way people can become sustainably successful. Truthfully speaking, mentorship is not listening to a man speak to you. Listen carefully. That's attendance. Mentorship is not opening up your ears to a man's teachings and having the teachings in your, your archives, your laptops, your systems. It may be a pathway, but mentorship starts with a decision that I am willing to submit myself to be taught and I will insist till I understand. Praise God. Mentorship does not start with the availability of information. It starts with a determination from the heart of the one who will be the recipient. It's a manifestation of humility to admit that there are dimensions that we do not yet see and know and have. Regardless of what our achievements are, when we come before God and we come before people he has anointed to teach, to train, to build, it is important that you assume the position of a student immediately and listen carefully and not just take notes but write it in the tablets of your heart and then obtain grace that's why we pray after every message why we are obtaining grace to walk in the reality of what we have heard the bible says now that ye know these things happy are you if you do them it's one thing to know but it's another thing to have the grace to do brothers and sisters listen I may not boast, it will be arrogant to boast of knowing everything. Nobody knows everything. It will be arrogant to make a boast to claim to have arrived. But one thing I can tell you is if you submit yourselves to these teachings wholeheartedly under God, you will never fail. Regardless, it's, it's not a prayer, it's the resultant effect. Trust me on this. The ideas that we communicate to you in this house are not necessarily my ideas alone. They have been age-long ideas that have been used by men and women who changed the course of history. They have been age-long ideas that our fathers have used to do mighty things for God. And now God has granted us the privilege to access these ideas. So I don't want you, whilst you are listening to these things, to have a cynical heart debating whether or not you think is worthy of acceptance. 
um, personally have made a commitment to believe and work with them. So whether or not you do not believe it, it does not affect my outcome because you see, success is not corporate. Everybody will have to obey himself into the promised land. I can help you, but I can't force you there. I came tonight with a very strong burden and I was very excited when the Lord put this in my heart. It had been something that I planned to share, but um, I mean, it was, it was so powerful when the Lord put it in my heart. I really want you to succeed. God sees my heart and um, the leaders know how much we are passionately committed about the success of everyone. I believe and I have held this conviction for years and I have taught many including our students in the school of ministry that loyalty, loyalty, loyalty is a debt that you must pay. When people are loyal to you, it's as though you owe them something. When people are loyal to your anointing, loyal to your words, loyal to your grace, loyal to the dealings of God upon your life, you must reciprocate that loyalty by ensuring that their trust is not disappointed. That's why we pray. That's why we fast. That's why we prepare. That's why we research. That's why we study to make sure that every information that you receive is not only spiritual, but life applicable and indomitable. Having a character that can suppress whatever limitations. Hallelujah. So pray one more time and say, Lord, I submit myself afresh. Please pray from your heart. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Hallelujah. Success system. Part one Success Systems. Part one Success Systems. Part one The goal of this series is twofold. Number one, to reveal to us the requirements, the requirements that must be satisfied for you to experience lasting kingdom success number two to unveil to you the laws the principles the secrets the mysteries that are responsible for commanding success from god's standpoint it's an attempt to help our lives bear fruit it's an attempt to make and help contribute to making our lives meaningful it's an attempt to improving the quality of our lives and to help us um, in our quest to become effective spiritual people effective kingdom ambassadors it's an attempt to create balance to every area of our lives so that we are not unfruitful in any aspect so this is a very powerful series we're starting off with part one and um, I pray that God will help us. Two scriptures very quickly, and then we'll take the course content. Second, Second Peter chapter 1, verse 8. Please, media, you need to work with us very, very fast tonight. Media, help us. Second Peter 1, verse 8. And then we'll look at Genesis 39, verse 2 to 6. It says, For if these things be in you, what things? certain informations certain traits for if these things be in you and abound are lavish it says they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful 
in this context it says in the knowledge of the lord jesus christ but it applies to every area of life if these things are bound in you and they are lavish they will produce an effect the effect is that they can stop barrenness and unfruitfulness from your life it didn't say if these things be around you if these things be in you if you believe them and buy them then it says you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful genesis 39 four verses two to six genesis 39 and the lord was with joseph and he was a prosperous man and he was in the house of his master the egyptian we're reading to verse six and his master saw that the lord was with him and that the lord did what made all that he did to prosper in his hand and joseph found favor or grace in his sight and he served him and he made him overseer over his house and all that he had put in his hands verse 5 and it came to pass from that time that he had made him overseer in his house and over all that he had that the lord blessed the egyptian's house for joseph's sake and the blessing of the lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field the last verse and he left all that he had in joseph's hand everybody say trust and he knew not what and he knew not what he had save the bread which he did eat and joseph was a goodly person and well favored help us tonight in the name of jesus christ write down the things we are going to be considering in this series please write those online follow us or at least you'll be patient to allow the media lead you there are a few things that we are going to be looking at and wherever we can stop tonight we'll stop and pray but please i want to take my time and teach you this i want you to understand it and i trust that god will take advantage of this series to bless and lift us in jesus name the first thing we'll be considering tonight is the reality of failure how real is failure is it a mirage or is it real number two we are going to look at the concept of success in the kingdom number two we are going to look at the concept of success in the kingdom what is god's idea of a successful person the concept of success in the kingdom number three we are going to look at the concept of laws and principles the concept of laws and principles Can I continue? Number four, definition of terminologies. There's too much confusion. So we need to clarify terminologies as it regards or as it relates to kingdom success. Definition of terminologies. And then number four, number five, thank you. The laws of success. The laws of success. We are going to be examining the laws. And then number six will end with a very strong impartation. And trust God to carry something that will activate these dimensions in our lives. Praise the Lord. If you believe it, say amen. amen. Now, statistically speaking. Statistically speaking. Five out of every hundred people ever become successful in their lifetime five percent out of every hundred people that you see only about five percent of them ever become successful whether from a human standpoint in fact when you say from a divine standpoint the statistic reduces again very few people a young man gets up living his life bubbling with joy hoping he will be successful and you see the the excitement of life on his face but that same young man 
give him 70 80 years down the line is a testimony of pain a testimony of regrets a testimony of sadness lost opportunities mishandled laws a life of fatal failure most people die in pain most people die advising their children don't be like me most people die apologizing to their generation because they finally are forced to swallow the bitter pill and admit they did not make it pastors business people parents young people the same challenge is eating up our society the correct definition of success and a life that will become a template and a model enough worthy of emulation as far as kingdom success is concerned so it's, it's a big issue it's a tragedy that about five percent can you imagine that out of every hundred people whether they are church goers fasting giants prayer warriors five percent of them eventually will become successful whether in ministry whether in business in fact um it, it is said that over 70 to 80 percent of churches that start up end by the end of that year they can't continue no members no resources no wisdom spiritual forces that they've not been able to surmount and other auxiliary factors that add to enforce the failures of people write this down failure is real failure is real second point failure will happen to you if you allow it i think it's a revelation many of us need to come to terms with we have this inheritance mindset that by default just because you have a nice name or you think you are too kind to fail there's no such reality in the school of success let me tell you everybody is a potential candidate for failure until you exempt yourself is a reality that is upon us by default <laughs> a lot of spiritual people will say i reject it you better listen quietly to what i'm saying i am a very spiritual person i have learned the foolishness the foolishness of exaggerating truth beyond the jurisdiction of their relevance is what causes failure as a side effect please listen carefully i love you too much to deceive you I love you too much to mislead you and one of the graces god has given us in this ministry is capacity for balance so anything you hear that you do not understand just be patient by god's grace i'm a good builder every house is built by some man he says but god is the builder of all and so we will not build a house that is lopsided we'll build a house that stands solid on the rock no matter what shakes it it remains there say amen failure is real brothers and sisters there are pastors who are failures regardless of their spirituality there are churches that are failing and have failed some of us here seated right now it's an uncomfortable truth but right now if you will admit you know you are failing woefully for many of us are we together now yes disappointed expectations and it's important that we find out God's system to bail ourselves out and do so very, very fast. So failure is real. Failure is very real. We see it every day. You see failure in the face of angry people who walk upon our streets. You see failure in the face of failed marriages. A man and a woman who love themselves and have an agreement to live happily and right now you see someone age 24 and he tells you i have divorced how long did you marry six months one year how about failed businesses how about failed career pathways how about failed ministries how about disappointed expectations i should enter a particular dimension of the anointing by now and after donkey years you are still there wallowing around in mediocrity failure is real it lives among us we see it in the faces of our dear loved ones 
we see it in the frustration of our parents you watch them and you know they are frustrated some of them are too arrogant to admit it so they act as though they are still in control but many have been forced painfully so to admit that there is something they are missing many people have been forced amplified by the recession to swallow their pride and admit i'm not getting something right nobody becomes a success by accident nobody becomes a success by chance by luck yesterday i was ministering at a crusade and i gave an instance i think I've, I've given that instance here and i want to repeat that example watch this if i make a mistake and forget that there is a step down and then i sleep and i match will gravity forgive me and say no i know you were joking you were not serious next time be serious no gravity does not have in its configuration the assumption that men make mistake every time i violate that law of gravity i pay for it and i do so immediately and sometimes i may not have a second chance again this is how success is and this is how failure is listen many well-intentioned people many christians born again and filled with the holy spirit have indoctrinated themselves into believing that just because of that status their life should succeed automatically no being a christian gives you the potential and the access for success there is a difference between access and delivery access means potentials delivery means experience listen very carefully all that jesus christ did for us on the cross gives us access but there are systems built in the dealings of god with men that converts access to delivery where you are now a a manifesto of those realities one of my very great mentors dr mike mudok he's taught the body of christ for a very long time that there are two dimensions to the dealings of god with man there are two dimensions to the approach of spiritual things number one he calls it the person of jesus and number two he calls it the principles of jesus number one he calls it the life of god number two he calls it the laws of god everybody say the life of god say the person of jesus say the principles of jesus and my Mudok teaches that the person of jesus is what gives you that encounter that creates your peace and secures your eternal destiny with god but it's not necessarily the key for your victory here and now are we together now so i can be born again filled with the holy spirit if i die i'm going to heaven if jesus comes i'm going to heaven i can live a life of peace whether in plenty or lack because his person has consumed me i have conformed to the image of the christ experientially but then the dimension that is responsible for my success and victory on earth is not just the person of jesus but the principles of jesus everybody say the principles of jesus that means i can be born again filled with the holy spirit and yet be sick born again filled with the holy spirit and yet be poor born again filled with the holy spirit and yet fail in career born again filled with the holy spirit and become a total failure in life such a possibility exists now most christians have embraced the life of god but we have ignored his principles are we together now and most unbelievers have ignored the life of god but embraced his principles so most of them are going to hell because they have openly declared that jesus is not lord over their lives but they have lived their entire lives applying the kingdom applying the principles of the kingdom and i've taught you here in koinonia that there is a dimension of god's power that is programmed into his laws so that whoever obeys them will get the result regardless 
of whether he has a relationship with God or not. There is a dimension of the power and the ability of God that is programmed in laws. So it doesn't matter who applies them. There are certain dimensions that are privy to only believers. It is only in Christ that those dimensions can be obtained. Like peace. Like the joy in the Holy Ghost. Are we together now? Like the life of Jesus. Security of your eternal destiny. The ability to count it all joy when you face diverse temptations. All of these attributes are not possible to the man who has not embraced Christ. But the principles of the kingdom the aspect that we have largely ignored i've shared with us on my my idea and i believe that that's god's idea of spiritual growth that there are two indices to measure a man's spiritual growth number one is the degree of your conformity to the image and the person of christ you're rising in character you are confirming experientially to the image of the christ but the second dimension the second index is your comprehension of the mysteries and the secrets of the kingdom both are required together to say you are growing spiritually if all that is happening to you is conformity to the image of christ that is a lopsided and a biased growth if all that is happening to you is just access to the principles of the kingdom and you never encounter the person and the life you will be carnal and you will never become a spiritual man so the synergy between these two dimensions is what produce spiritual men who are relevant both in time and eternity if that is you say amen are we together so failure is very real i think it was a wise man i don't know who exactly who said doing the same thing consistently and expecting a different result is one of the definitions of insanity doing the same thing and hoping and wishing that that same thing you are doing will just change results by itself he said it's one of the definition of insanity in other words if your outcome is not consistent with your desire then you have to check what you believe and what you are doing are we together now everyone say failure is real and it's not my portion write this down the word success let's define it let's look at the concept of success in the kingdom lord give us understanding give us passion to learn please give us isaiah 117 a scripture just came into my spirit and i want you to see it isaiah chapter 1 verse 17. write this word down success what is the definition of success i'm i'm trying to introduce the concept of success because please look up the body of christ has had issues for a very long time there are many denominations and there are many Christians, some of them looking at me right now, many listening to me online. Every time you mention the word success, especially in church and to a Christian, there is this buildup of resentment. We have associated success with carnality. We have taught and indoctrinated ourselves into believing that there are two groups of people in the body of Christ. Those who are carnal, they don't love God and want to be successful. And those who are total failures now for the sake of their spiritual growth. There's no such doctrine in the Bible. The Bible says looking up to Jesus, not up to a denomination, not up to a pastor. It's important to follow us, but be sure we are following Christ. And if at any point you are not following Christ, it is within your power to switch. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. I have shared with us again the danger of creating doctrines out of personalized dealings. That a man can have a particular bias which may be a product of his cultural limitation. Let me tell you something. 
many of these doctrines that were shipped into the church and, and you know I love the body of Christ and I don't say it with any particular sense of cynicism I'm teaching the body and so we must realize that most of these things that have become stumbling blocks listen carefully many of us have inherited this from our parents many of our, our loved ones so spiritual and well-meaning but this this um mindset especially for all of us who are around the middle belt and the northern area because of the evangelical nature of christianity and the way we received it we have been taught that any attention that is paid to your comfort and giving your life some sense of meaning here and now is useless so in an attempt to emphasize the fact that we need to live with eternity in view we have created a system of mediocrity and camped around it so there are many lazy men who have used evangelical christianity as an excuse to keep them lazy keep their wives and their children in poverty and penury and suffering there are men today who have not have not been working for over 20 years and it, it doesn't matter one room with your children they were born and bred there and he said the most important thing is this world is not our home one day we are going somewhere is an expression of carelessness so there are many doctrines that have endorsed laziness endorsed irresponsibility endorsed lack of productivity so the average believer has been unable to rise to a position of kingdom influence where we can legislate on behalf of the kingdom it's a tragic situation please give us the scripture again he said read the first four words if you are a Christian one to read again the word do well is the word succeed so change it and use it well one to go again he didn't say be successful he says learn you must be taught he says learn to do well it's not just saying make it uh -uh. learn be studious submit yourself under the atmosphere and the information that will cause you to do well when i saw that scripture it was quite instructive learn to succeed joshua selman learn it is not in you by default learn the same way um where is he doctor it's not a doctor by default but you learn to become a doctor you learn to become an architect are we together you learn to become a mother that's why when ladies give birth for the first time their mothers or any of their guardians come around right and help them they can read books and google and search but it's one thing to have that theory and then all of a sudden the mother comes and says okay i will help you and then helps her and she becomes strong and then tomorrow she will help her own children learn say i will learn and i will succeed say i will learn i will be trained and i will succeed look at this when you want to become a doctor what do you do you pass through the medical school correct when you want to become an engineer what do you do you pass through the engineering school when you want to become an architect what do you do you pass through the system so when you want to become a success what do you do unfortunately there is no official institution for making people successful you see why many people are failures there are many graduates because there are many universities there are many primary school certificate holders because there are many primary school there are many prisoners because there are many prisons and there are many opportunities for crime but there are few successful people because there are few successful mentors and there are few successful platforms that can help men become successful learn to do well write this down success is the accomplishment of a worthy goal write it down the word success has nothing to do with money it has nothing to do with all of these things success is the accomplishment of a worthy goal any goal that is ideal that is worthwhile when you set goals and achieve them 
you are said to be successful this is the general definition of success the accomplishment of a worthy goal a worthy ideal i want to become a doctor and then you pass through the system and you become a doctor with respect to that goal you are successful i want to become a joyful mother and you walk towards it and then eventually you get married and have your children with respect to that goal you are successful so without goals there is no basis for being successful are we together now the accomplishment of a worthy goal a worthy ideal is what we call success now let me give you a kingdom definition of success i've given you a general definition let's look at a kingdom definition write this down the fulfillment of your God-given assignment is called success from God's standpoint. The fulfillment of your God-given assignment, not just any goal. If an arm robber says, I must steal, and then he steals successfully, from an earthly standpoint, we say he has succeeded. From, but from the kingdom standpoint, he's not a success. The fulfillment of your divine assignment the fulfillment of your god-given assignment is called success another definition the effective use this is my own definition now the effective use of your life your gifts and your resources to draw men to jesus and bless humanity is called success I'll take it again the effective use of your life comma your gifts comma your resources to draw men to Jesus and then to be a blessing to humanity is my definition of success so when you use your life like a drink offering when you use your gifts and when you use your resources to draw men to Jesus and then an opportunity to be a blessing to humanity by God's standpoint and by men's standpoint you are a success are we together now the effective use of your life the effective use of your gifts the effective use of your resources to draw men to Jesus and then to bless humanity to advance the purposes of the kingdom and to be a blessing to humanity that's success are you blessed now very important I, I need all of us to have this understanding so that when we talk about success we are not talking of some money mongering greedy lifestyle because this is another side of the pendulum there are many people who are so carnal so fleshly the entire circumference of their christian experience is just money and houses and cars everything about their understanding of god is the one who gives my job is to just take take and be rich take and buy suit buy designers right move around the world in private jets and then we coin that and say this is my life it is a very misguided and not only misguided destructive idea about success that's what puts people under pressure to try to acquire things because we hope that by acquiring things will prove a point to people now the truth is if you are successful it will show around you but the acquisition of things is not equivalent to success in the kingdom that you are wearing a suit of a thousand or two thousand dollars you are wearing shoes you are having estates all around and you're a great man moving around and people bow down to you and people call you all kinds of names and you have multiplied troubles multiplied psychophants that does not make you a success how much you use your life how much you use your gifts how much you use your resources to draw men to Jesus and then to live a life of impact blessing your world blessing your humanity every other thing cars houses all these auxiliary benefits are just effects of success not the proof of success 
the proof you have succeeded is the joy in the heart of the father the proof you have succeeded is a life transformed not a car in your garage the proof that you have succeeded is somebody coming to know jesus because you did business well somebody coming to know jesus because you read your book well somebody coming to know jesus because of your marriage somebody coming to love jesus because of your ministry when your life has the capacity to draw men regardless of what area you are functioning to jesus and then an opportunity to make a mark to transform their lives you are successful by this definition you will agree with me that there are very few people who are successful there are many rich people but they are not successful there are many educated people but they are not successful haven't seen this definition why then are many people failures what is the reason is it that there is no access to knowledge is it that satan is so powerful and can veto everything jesus died for is it that uh, though if the few who are successful were just designed by god to be successful why do we have a whole generation as failures a whole community as failures i will tell you why because of one word just one word is called dishonor i'm going to be teaching you a lot of things we're still going to come to this issue of honor there is one reason why any one of you here will be a failure in life only one reason it's not that you didn't go to school it's not that you graduated with a third class no that's a silly excuse it's not that you are a northern man and they are victimizing you down south or you are a southern man and they are victimizing you down north or you are an eastern man and they are victimizing you those are very flimsy excuses they are obvious answers but not correct answers are we together there is only one reason why men fail in life dishonor dishonor to god dishonor to men dishonor to principles there's only one reason why people fail and there's only one reason why they will remain failures dishonor dishonor to god dishonor to men dishonor to principles is god helping us write this down laws and principles laws and principles l a w s and then principles i want us to examine the concept of laws and principles jesus thank you look at me in any other and every other aspect of our lives we believe in laws and principles but when it comes to our spiritual lives and our destinies we do not believe that they walk by principles it's a tragedy it's a tragedy please hear me brothers and sisters it's a tragedy when you go to school you know that there are laws and principles you are a science-based student they teach you all kinds of science things physics chemistry they teach you how to do a lot of things they teach you what to do they teach you laws different kinds of laws and the more you master those laws the more you keep advancing and then eventually when you have gained certain dimensions of mastery they award certain certificates to you but when it comes to destiny we have been indoctrinated into believing that we are just believers and whether we respect laws or not we will become successful i will tell you where our resentment for laws came from the imbalance and the inaccurate teaching of the concept of law and works this is where we got our resentment for the word laws great men and women of god scattered across the face of the earth in an attempt and i believe everything that they teach in an attempt to explain or to bring the body of christ into the reality of christ's finished work listen carefully in an attempt to show how that the old is gone the old testament you know and that we are products of this new testament now in an attempt to help believers live the victorious life 
we have from one person copying another without finding out what exactly is being said we have drifted to another side of the pendulum and so the average believer especially the average pentecostal charismatic believer when you hear the word laws when you hear the word principles you just reject it you don't even need to know law of what you just say no 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 i'm not under the law write this down laws are systems is a system of rules that guarantee a predictable outcome a law is a system of rules or just a system of operation either a system of rules or a system of operation that guarantees a predictable outcome so laws are systems of operations they are systems of rules that if and when diligently applied guarantee predictable outcomes write this down laws are a reflection of god's justice system laws are a reflection of god's justice system the bible says righteousness and justice are the foundations it didn't say where it never changed righteousness and justice are still the foundations of his throne laws are a reflection of god's justice system so that nobody will say god victimized others and did certain things no he leaves it into your hands to define whether or not you will succeed or fail write this down laws are the keys to consistency and predictability laws are the keys please pay attention especially those following online wherever you are i want you to please pay attention take notes if you can't follow us on facebook and, and we're tweeting and then we're we're making posts please follow i have a passion to help you understand this laws are the keys to consistency and predictability write this down when your results do not change regardless of obstacles then you are operating by laws when your results your outcomes do not change regardless of the prevailing obstacles is a sign that you are engaging laws hallelujah so you see a ministry celebrating 36 years a ministry celebrating 40 years People like Kenneth Copeland, Benny Hinn, 40 something years in ministry. Brothers and sisters, that ministry was built by laws. It was not just built by emotions. Many great corporations across the world. I don't know what the oldest um, retail outfit is in Nigeria. The oldest restaurant in Nigeria. But we have very great um, restaurants across the nation of the earth. Right? Like Colonel Sanders and his Kentucky Fried Chicken and a number of people walmart and all of this some of those outfits are hundreds of years old the founders have long been dead but the laws kept it write this down laws make your results outlive you laws and principles make your results outlive you laws and principles make your results outlive you write this down finally and then i'll begin to teach correct understanding and application of laws are the keys to outstanding success correct understanding and application of laws are the keys to outstanding success correct understanding not just application correct understanding and application of laws and principles are the keys to outstanding success everybody look at this mike is playing something do you know that the same way he's playing this if someone in ghana if someone in america plays based on whatever sequence is playing they will get the same result because they are based on laws is that true please help me with this 
this is nestle water how many of you know there's nestle water in lagos how many of you know there's nestle water in ibadan how many of you know there's nestle water in maiduguri the taste is almost the same if not the same the packaging and everything when you look at this one and leave and go to a shop somewhere and you look at it you would think they took the one here there there is consistency in results there is sustainability there is predictability there are many workers those who package this in lagos may not be those who package it in another geopolitical zone but they are all governed by the same laws so their results are the same correct thank you um pastor femi please come my friend please come two of you please stand here now look how smart they are both looking stand here please now look at this pastor femi has a knotted tie and this gentleman here has a knotted tie now watch this were you in the same room when you were knotting your ties did you meet yourselves did you know you were going to knot ties but you took this rope did something to it and it became this and you see how much it looks like the same thing both of them were miles apart but engaging the same principle and regardless of their location the results were the same are we together now now this time will not say Lila, i'm not going to not because i'm not in koinonia no if a thief not this tie to dress smart and go and steal the tie will not say you are a thief in two hours you are about to steal i won't agree no laws laws if a wicked man plants maize and a tongue-talking born again agriculturist plants maize both lands will produce and in fact this guy may even have a bumper harvest correct laws create similarity of results so if i want to teach someone else how to be a smart gentleman like this not in ties i don't need to tell him come and live with me forever i just need to show him how to convert a rope a nylon rope or a cotton rope are we together now to become such a beautiful object that you can put on your neck thank you sirs so it's not just where you are it's not just your background there is something you do not know you've heard me say it many times something i do not know is responsible for my limitation in life how true how true The correct understanding and application of laws are the keys to outstanding success. We had a great time over at Bidda. Um, we rounded off the meeting yesterday and I'm sure some of them are following. It was such a great time as God always does in the meetings. And I had a little session with the leaders and many of them kept asking me questions. Man of God, what is the secret to your anointing? and i in my mind i thought i said if i tell these people now they will not believe it you see that as i'm speaking to you right now somebody in another meeting unconnected to koinonia is still experiencing wisdom and the power of god at the same time you look at a graduate from unn you look at a graduate from abu you look at a graduate from unilag bring all of them together haven't never met themselves but they were submitted to the same laws they will talk as though they know they've known themselves for years correct that means there is something all of us can know that regardless of where you are all of us will call and they'll say are you experiencing the same result you say exactly as said do you believe that honestly if you don't believe this just go home because it will be that you are wasting your time this night the, the goal of this teaching is to create predictability to your success it's is is success important somebody may be asking me be patient and ask me five years from now remain the way you are and keep going I will be glad to answer you five years from now when you watch what happened to those who are five years ahead of you now 
when you watch the pain when you watch three children stand before you and say daddy we are hungry when you watch your child become an arm robber simply because of failure then you will ask that question again is success important it's a terrible thing please be careful how you listen to people don't criticize men of god don't criticize leaders even business experts be careful right now we have all kinds of business experts anyone just chokes himself with tie holding all kinds of hilarious seminars everywhere and teaching all kinds of garbages and nonsense and in the end of it you are so motivated because of the rhetorics and the gimmicks that are used and then at the end of it you find out that your life is just an emotional roller coaster and you get back into square one be careful I desire to succeed with my life I have tasted a bit of it it gives me joy to be able to lead a flourishing ministry I know how painful it is to suffer and struggle in ministry I know how painful it is to come and prepare as a man of God and not have anybody to bless today by the grace of God we are reaching several nations of the world and we are only starting I have tasted a bit of the potency of these laws and I know they work they will work for you in the name of Jesus Christ they will work for you in the name of Jesus Christ one of I think is I think his patients I spot her here she sent me a text very very funny text and um, she's a student in the school of ministry and i had been teaching them a number of things and then she she went to Zamfara and had an opportunity to pray for someone to be filled with the Holy Spirit according to her she was shaking and wondering whether it will happen and I mean in minutes that person was shaking and blasting in tongues and she called me said my God look at this thing and then she tried it on another person and it worked flawlessly predictability predictability there are keys nobody is born rich nobody is born blessed are we together he said in iniquity did my mother conceive me your you can live out like that or you can change i made a decision that i will change it's a decision that i made and i want you tonight if you have not made that decision to make a strong decision i'm taking it gradually with us because i want us to understand this let's define terminologies right we are going to define 14 words that we'll be playing around with in this series. 14 words that have been misunderstood. I don't want to make the mistake of believing that when I mention a word, all of us understand that this is what I'm saying. Write it down. The first word I've already defined is success. The accomplishment of a worthy goal. Am I boring you? Please write. The second word I want us to define and familiarize ourselves with is failure. What is failure? Write it down. That's the second word. I'll be very, very fast so that we can stop somewhere and pray. Jesus, we bless you. Failure is a state or condition of not meeting a desirable or intended objective failure is a state or a condition of not meeting a desirable or intended objective you are said to have failed when you do not meet up to a desirable objective or an intended objective the inability to meet your desired or intended objectives generally speaking is regarded as failure word number three favor what is favor and um maybe i may dwell a bit here just trying to explain a few things because our general mainstream definition of favor especially in the body of christ is very limited it does not bring out the substance especially when it has to do with favor with men generally we define favor as unmerited access you know and that is right we define favor as grace 
that is right but let me give you three definitions of favor very quickly number one favor means help full stop favor means what help h-e-l-p help whether divine or human favor means help still defining favor what is favor god and men contributing to ensure that you succeed what is favor god and men contributing to ensure that you succeed that's favor when god comes into partnership with you when men come into partnership with you to ensure that you succeed then you are said to be a favored person god and men contributing to ensure that you succeed number three what is favor men investing their time credibility and resources to help you achieve your goals what is favor men investing their time men investing their credibility men investing their resources to help you achieve your goals when a man invests his time that's favor when a man endorses you puts his reputation and credibility on the line to make sure you rise that's favor when men invest their resources be it spiritual financial whatever it is to help you achieve your goals that's favor never forget these three definitions they are powerful definitions word number four grace let's define grace word number four grace i wrote something down i had to tear it out of my little note i want to read it for you one day i was inspired and i wrote it down about grace just pay attention as i list as i read grace as understood by many is seen as unmerited access listen to me this very confusion exaggeration over the powerful concept of grace stems from this one definition okay the very confusion and exaggeration over the powerful concept of grace stems from this one definition a very correct and biblical definition but very limiting to define grace only as unmerited access is a correct definition it is biblical but it is very limiting and sometimes can be destructive grace this is what i define grace as no i will tell you just just listen to me I'm, I'm giving you my contemplations just listen grace is a multi-dimensional reality in the realm of the spirit and in the dealings of god with men that doesn't just refer to things unmerited but realities and provisions that are exclusively found or domiciled and accessed from god in christ in other words the definition of grace is not just limited to things unmerited but it is also anything that comes from god are we together now it is a generic expression that attempts to communicate a reality a provision a possibility of things not obtained from the earth realm but from god and only in and through christ now listen i wrote this down this definition allows for other dimensions of grace to be captured and experienced this morning the holy spirit okay this is me writing permit me i'm reading as i just wrote directly this morning the holy spirit himself gave me the best and most concise definition of grace i have ever heard and known and i'll tell you what the holy spirit told me about grace ready james 1 17 this is how the holy spirit defined grace for me james 1 17 please put it up for us very fast let's see how we can gain time james 1 17 
is the definition of grace read it one to read every good and perfect every good gift and every perfect gift that comes from above and come down from the father of light stop is called grace anointing is grace wisdom is grace promises achieved is grace anything that is not within the jurisdiction of the earth realm that requires coming down from heaven from the father of light and can only be available in christ and through christ is called grace let me finish this i wrote something down every good gift the word gift there please leave that scripture up let me just explain something the word gift there is the word dosis and it means the act of giving and every perfect gift is the word dorema which means the thing given so it talks about both the thing given and the act of giving are we together now then it says it's from above and all of that now this scripture shows that grace is not limited to gifts alone but the very act of communicating things from god to men is called grace are you getting my point now so that grace is not just a thing you collect the very act of communicating with god is called grace now i define grace for you write this down grace is the sum total grace is the sum total of any and all things made available to man by god comma i'll take it again grace is the sum total of any and all things made available to man by god but only in and through christ grace is the sum total of any and all things made available to man by god but only in and through christ so the anointing is an expression of grace prosperity is an expression of grace salvation an expression of grace protection all of these things are expressions of grace look at me when you define grace only as unmerited access then there is no space for obedience to be featured in grace are you hearing what i'm saying now now when you obey and get results it is true that what god is giving you is unmerited in that you cannot receive it are we together now but being unmerited does not stop the fact that there are conditions to fulfill the cheapest thing we get is salvation and even salvation requires a response you use your mouth you use your hands you use your legs you use your tears there is a participation the gift is unmerited but the act of receiving is merited are we together whosoever calls on the name of the lord shall be saved whosoever does not call upon the name of the lord whosoever believes in him shall have life everlasting whosoever does not believe in him is condemned already these are the words of jesus please don't limit grace to just unmerited access <clears throat> grace is access definition number five let's hurry up works let's define works now that i've defined grace i have to define works because if i do not define works um then there will be a lot of confusion let me i also wrote something about works here listen to my contemplation about works and then we'll dictate works on the other hand should not be equated with action rather certain kinds of activities look up let me explain to you what i mean many times we have been taught the moment you hear the word works you just mean ah i'm not i don't have any works again you are joking you are joking we will work for the rest of our lives there is works works as 
defined in context to grace and in context to the old testament refers to certain kinds of activities that um, were captured in the judaic laws and were captured in the commandments that were given to moses that men must do ceremonial activities to the end that they will be able to create a system of atonement for themselves that's what was abolished works is not the same as action action is still relevant for results do not equate works with actions the works of the law are different from works what was abolished was the works of the law i never will have to slaughter an animal again i never will have to mediate between a priest to help me reach god once and and forever christ has offered himself the veil has been torn that is true but to mean there is nothing else to do in terms of action in terms of obedience in terms of partnership in terms of participation is a joke the bible says we are saved by grace but that system works through faith and faith is not just believing and confessing is the summation of everything you do in obedience to fulfill the conditions that are tied to the results you desire it's called faith it's the word pistis it doesn't just mean conviction conviction first but the actions that are taken in partnership with that conviction to get a desired outcome what are works in the new testament every time we talk of works we mean one word obedience write it down works in the new testament is obedience works in the new testament is partnership please write this down every time we talk of works we are not talking about going back to the law ceremonial cleansings and all of these rituals that were captured in, in the Judaic law and then all the hilarious laws and the stringent conditions that the nation of Israel had to go through that has been abolished once and forever but obedience will always be a requirement always be a requirement partnership will always be a requirement so works equal obedience to the believer today your partnership towards making promises manifest is what i call works your partnership towards making promises manifest is what we call works we need to define this because i'm going to be playing around with these words and um it's important that all of us when you hear it you know what i'm saying number what now let's hurry up i will rush now number six excellence let's define excellence very quickly number six excellence what is excellence excellence means the highest level of quality available write it down the highest level of quality available is called excellence the highest level of quality available is called excellence another definition surpassing ordinary standards is called excellence so you are excellent to the degree to which you can produce the highest level of quality available you are excellent to the degree to which you surpass ordinary standards can i continue next word mediocrity what is mediocrity the quality of being average mediocrity is the quality of being average please participate pay attention to these words the quality of being average what does it mean to be mediocre to be common what does it mean to be mediocre to be indifferent the quality of being average the quality of being common the quality of indifference what does it mean to be mediocre ordinary like everyone else ordinary like everyone else is the attitude of mediocrity average common indifference like everyone else next definition eight am i right number eight relationships what are relationships write this down relationships are advantageous connections simple relationships are advantageous connections broadly speaking connections 
but with respect to what we are dealing with advantageous connections everyone say advantageous connections say it inside and outside advantageous connections write this down usually mutually beneficial usually mutually beneficial so we are talking about advantageous connections this is my definition that is usually mutually beneficial that means all the parties involved in that connectivity should benefit relationships can be both divine and human write it down relationships can be both divine and human it is possible to have a relationship with god it's possible to have a relationship with satan it's possible to have a relationship with a demon spirit it's possible to have a relationship with the holy spirit advantageous connections number nine knowledge what is knowledge thank you jesus what is knowledge the gathering or acquisition of information the gathering or acquisition of information or facts that's called knowledge the gathering or acquisition of information facts is called knowledge many of you are tired of writing that's the secret to your peace just keep writing what is knowledge awareness of familiarity what is knowledge awareness of familiarity that is gained through education or experience what is knowledge again awareness or familiarity that is gained through experience or through education can i continue number 10 understanding the 10th terminology we are defining understanding what is understanding comprehension comprehension in one word understanding is comprehension Eleven, wisdom. We're almost there. Eleven, wisdom. Correct application of knowledge also means accurate application of knowledge. Write it down. Wisdom is the correct application of knowledge also refers to the accurate application of knowledge when knowledge is applied accurately and correctly it's called wisdom distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us Distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us. Do you know what? Do you know what I'm imagining? I'm just imagining how many of you buy me cars and houses and say, Apostle, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, no, look, you will be too blessed to do it. Even if you don't like me, you will do it. You will turn back. One day I'll come to your house and when others are languishing, I will see you together with your children giving God praise and say today is a day off. We are just worshipping and blessing his name. And people will say, are you in Nigeria? You say, no, I, I, I'm only here, but we, 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 we sit on a throne and we manipulate things according to our order. Remember I used to say this thing years ago. Believe it, oh. Believe it. I imagine you going to your mother and your father and saying, Mama, I know you did not make it in this life, but I have a surprise. Cover her eyes and take her somewhere and say, Mama, the car you did not drive, this is it. Let the devil do anything he would do. Do you think your mother will be happy? You are going to someone's house and you are seeing them want to tear your member's clothes because of rent. I must kill you now. How much is it? 250,000. That's all right. That's all right. In two minutes, is there. God bless you. Not alone. 
I pray that God will help you. God will make this happen. Someone will step into your home and see peace between you and your children and be born again there. No preaching and say, this is what I've been fighting. This is what I'm teaching you. If you pay attention, I don't care what tribe, I don't care what background, I don't care what is happening or not happening in your life. You listen to this, you will arise. Number 12, prosperity. Let's define prosperity. What does it mean to prosper? It means to do well. Quickly, please. Prosperity means to do well. Prosperity means to excel. Prosperity means to flourish. Prosperity means to thrive. It means to do well. It means to excel. It means to flourish. It means to thrive. That's what it means to prosper. Two more definitions and we're there. Number 13. Goals. G-O-A-L-S. Goals. What are goals? Clearly defined desires, objectives, and outcomes. What are goals? Clearly defined desires, objectives, and outcomes. Clearly defined desires, objectives, and outcomes. 14 the last word value v-a-l-u-e value what is the definition of value write it down point of difference what is the definition of value point of difference another definition your uniqueness another definition your skill so what is value your point of difference your uniqueness your skill write this down under value everything that constitutes an advantage in your life and is capable of blessing humanity and glorifying God is called value I repeat everything that constitutes an advantage in your life and is capable of blessing humanity and glorifying God is called value everything that constitutes an advantage in your life and is capable of blessing humanity and is capable of glorifying God is called value take a deep breath you have tried you have been writing some of you that's a key to drive laziness you've not done this in a long time i gave you 14 definitions that have controlled the destinies of many i gave you 14 definitions that are capable of changing your life from tonight i gave you 14 definitions that will be the key between your joy or your pain listen i gave you 14 definitions that will make your church your ministry your group excel or fail i gave you 14 definitions that will tell us what you will become write this down success is predictable i don't need to see your results to know whether you will be successful success is predictable now I can look at your life now and predict with digital precision whether or not you will succeed there are people I look at their lives and I know they will fail it's a very sad truth they will be offended and they will think he's pr are you God and then you see that you really fail failure is also predictable write it down so success is predictable semicolon failure is also predictable i can look at your life brothers and sisters and i can know that you are going to be a very powerful prayer warrior you are going to be a very great word addict but i know that as far as success is concerned 
you may not be very successful i can look at your life and i know that you are going to be a very rich man you will buy the jets and the rolls royces but you will never be a spiritual man i can look at your life and know that you may be a happy man in terms of finances but marriage you will pay a deep price i can look at your life and know you are going to be a very good husband but a very poor and broke man i can look at your life and know that you are going to be a very intelligent graduate but you may be jobless for the rest of your life or you may barely be employed and remain at the lower levels i can look at your life and know you will never rise to a managerial position listen the spirit realm is higher than the natural realm but it's not unpredictable we look at the clouds and we can forecast with a very commendable level of accuracy that there will be rain and it happens a pilot tells you we are landing at five minutes past one five minutes past one on the dot the tire is touching the ground we can we can tame our environment with that degree of accuracy what makes you think you need money in your account to prove you are successful i can look at you now and know that even if one million is in your account it will run away as fast as it came you know years ago as i began to pursue the things of the spirit i stumbled across materials that taught on this i folded them with speed and threw them one side I felt, look let me press on this how foolish i was imagine that i came for koinonia now and after preaching a powerful message i now tell you all of you you are going to sow my mind is not stable I'm, i need i need you have to pay my rent i'm blessing you the bible says a and b and c everybody stand up worship team you are bringing fifty thousand. prayer band you are bringing one million <laughs> beggar <laughs> you are not praying for nothing one million leaders you are bringing two million oh what a cost way of leadership you will never bless anybody being a nuisance that way god did not send me to be a nuisance to you he sent me to bless you yes it will never happen in this ministry where i will say please raise offering for me so that i can eat well no you know what we call escape velocity in physics where you have gone past certain things it's not pride it will never happen again till jesus comes i found my way to better days <laughs> i found my way to better days for many of you tonight you're on your way to better days let them laugh at you. You're on your way. Status is changed. Prophesy to yourself. one minute and say lord i am truly changing i'm not just motivating myself for nothing there is a way that can lead a man out of misery there is a way that can lead a man out of a life of pain there is a way that can lead a man to the wealthy place there is a way that can lead a man to a life of impact, a 
life of dignity, a life of beauty, a life of peace, a life of glory. Please sit down. Thank you. Sit down. Our time is gone. Let me teach for a few minutes and then we'll pray. Now we've had all the peripheral space lesson I want to teach you. You just sang that you are on your way to better days. For some of you, you were joking. For some of you, you were emotional. But for a few of you, you meant it. You know why? Let me ask all of you now in one minute. I want you to cast your mind at the worst thing you have seen happen to you and your parents. For some of you, is that you were thrown outside. For some of you, is that you had admission but there was no money to pay it. For some of you, is that you had to go and sleep with somebody somewhere to raise 10,000 and bring back home to eat. For some of you, is that you even found yourself in occultic groups because you wanted charm for protection or success. For some of you, there are men of God probably listening to me. You have had to under pressure join fraternities because you are hoping that it will give you ministry connection. Listen, if you don't do anything about your success, failure will force you to do wrong things. If you don't do anything about your success, failure will force you to do wrong things. When I look at people who say, God forbid, over my dead body, I will never do this and that. I tell them, keep quiet. You don't know the pressure that failure forces people. Pressure can make you do things you never imagined you will do. I've shared with you here, I think it's in Koinonia. Years ago, when I counseled a lady whose situation broke my heart and it motivated my appetite to understand its success. Her mother, true story, her mother was working with a boss and the father I think was not working and then they got to a point in their life where they were stranded I, I don't know if it was whatever it is but it was a very serious issue and the woman went to the boss to plead if she could have a raise in her salary to allow her cater for the needs of the family being the chief burden bearer which is very wrong of the entire family and according to what the lady told me, she said the boss looked at her own mother and said, you are not a, a small girl, you know what to do. If you want to raise someone's mother, matured lady, you know what to do. And the mother initially refused. But when she went to meet the father, the situation, the pressure was overwhelming. Both of them agreed that the mother should go and sleep with the man. Now, yeah, I know you are, we, are, we have, we can shout in church, ah, I won't do it. Don't talk like that because the person who did it is not an idiot. When somebody sits down with the head of a goat all through the night, he never planned it. That's what pressure would be. When the girl told me that thing, do you know what happened? Do you know that after the man paid that woman her money the shame she had to still quit the job and leave when the lady told me I said oh God what is this we are here jumping in church saying since I was young now I am old I have never seen the righteous forsaken that is such a lie I've seen many righteous people forsaken I've seen many of their seed beg for bread we sing it by faith and I believe it but I have seen many righteous people such as our parents such as your brother and your sister, you know them, they love God, they have been dejected and forsaken. They forsook loves and good things left them. Success is predictable. Failure is predictable. You can make up your mind from today that you are going to start a journey that will lead you into a dimension of success. You can make up your mind today that you are going to begin in, in a way and a dimension that you have never seen. To obey these laws and excel. Let's start with at least one or two of the laws for tonight. Ready? The laws of success. 
Thank you, Jesus. She brought us Calabra. She can love me. Ready? The first law of success, the law of relationships. Write it down. The law of relationships. Ignore this and suffer for the rest of your life. Embrace this and watch your life change as though you are holding a charm. Everybody say the law of relationships. Shout it. The law of... Write this down. Success is highly relationship dependent. Success is highly relationship dependent. Your success and my success in life is highly relationship dependent number two everything money can buy relationships can buy it write it down everything i don't care what it is anything at all that money can buy relationship can pay for it money can buy a house relationships can buy a house Money can help you build a church. Relationship can help you build a church. Listen. Money, as you know, naira and cobalt, dollars, pounds, yen. These things are not the only means of exchange. Relationship is currency. You can use it to pay for things. Relationship is currency. You can use it to pay for things. There are many ignorant people who want to be successful, but they do not know the law of relationships. So they have to look for money to pay for everything. You ask them and they tell you, I need 5 million. I need 10 million. Whereas the relationship you have is worth billions of naira in value. And it is capable of paying for anything money can pay for. There are people who have had to pay hundreds of thousands in a seminar and another person relationship paid for it and he entered free. Are we together now? There are people who have had to pay for rent and others relationship has been paying their rent. There are people who have had to pay for everything in life. Listen, if you use money to buy everything in life, you are not wise. No. It is a total display of lack of wisdom to use finances to get everything in life. It has nothing to do with being rich. That's the mistake our parents made. I love our parents. Don't get me wrong. Some of you here are parents. We love you. We honor you with all our hearts. Most people think you only succeed when you start having salary. 100,000 coming. And they now say, wow, I have 100,000. Then they have a need. They ignore relationships. And something that would be cheaply paid for, they would have to look for money and pay for it. I have paid for many things in my life using relationship. Relationship like a debit card. You can use it and withdraw many other things. You can use it and pay for many other things. Relationships today, by the grace of God, has given me platforms. I am connected to people. Listen, connectivity is a key to success. You must be connected. Relationships can help you access anointings. Relationships can help you access endorsements. Relationships can help you access favor 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 the major ingredient in success is favor but it takes relationships ah. we have come with open arms oh let the ancient words hallelujah there are things in my life i would have paid for financially let me give you an example this great auditorium, an act of kindness and benevolence by CGC, 
we have never paid a single couple for this venue. And some of you who are into real estate know if you value this and we have to pay every week for all of this. Imagine the millions of naira that relationship has made for you. Yes. Something in your life that you are hoping to change today is relationship dependent. Something, a dimension in your life you must enter now is relationship dependent. Unfortunately, for many of us, all we know is just love relationship. Husband and wife, somebody who likes a lady, a lady likes him back. That, that's only an aspect of it. Your relationship with God is a key to your success. Correct? You excel in life on the strength of your relationship with God. The healthier your relationship with God, the healthier your relationship with the Spirit of God, the greater your success. The prodigal son, please help me with the sound, please. The prodigal son made a big mistake. He broke relationship to look for money. Are you seeing the mistake of the prodigal son? Thank you. He, he jeopardized the potential for relationship. He had a relationship with his father. And on the strength of his relationship with his father, he did not pay for food. He did not pay for protection. But here's what he said. I don't want relationship. I rather want money. And he ended relationship and got money. What happened to the money? Without relationships, your finances will always be finite. There is only so much. Relationship is the secret of continual financial flow. Relationship is the secret. It is relationship that will keep finances i'm not talking about finances necessarily but i'm just using it as a case study relationships people have blessed me today purely based on relationships not even as in the capacity as a, of, of a man of god just to bless do you know that somebody in zaria today has the heart to bless you but you do not have the connection are you hearing what I'm saying now? Somebody has the capacity to pay for your rent without begging and without lying. Somebody has the capacity to give you free land purely based on relationship. During my birthday, people did things for me that almost brought tears from my eyes. I, I usually am not into celebrating birthdays and the rest. The leaders did something touching. Different people did things, but there were certain strategic blessings and things they were done. that I said, God, what is this? What is this? Relationships. Relationship can give you access to realms where your physical qualification should not allow you to enter there. Many of us have been trivializing relationships. That's why we keep hustling. The Bible says the labor of the fool where yet every one of them, he does not know the road to the city. By the grace of God, I understand the ministry of destiny helpers. The ministry of destiny helpers is futile without relationship. God has used me as a destiny helper to many. God has used many people as destiny helpers to me. Hallelujah. Cheap victories that many of us lose. Cheap victories. Some of our parents do not know anybody. And so you pay for everything. And when you want to use money alone to be successful, a day will come you will have all the money in your life. And you will find out that there are some things money cannot do. Are we together? There are people, you know, one of the greatest this is one of the greatest lessons that I've learned from my father. My father is a man who was wealthy in relationships. I used to think he was just, you know, you know, just someone who just likes people. But now that I've grown, I have seen the wisdom. Relationship paid many bills for my father. Relationships. Let me tell you something. Relationship is an investment. The same way you invest in business is the way you invest in relationship. All this something for nothing is, is a joke. There are many of us, we have this self-flattery 
they don't like me you don't call me i won't call you sit down there the day you need the person you don't call that's when you know relationships are important relationships are very serious value adding investments there are times you will call your destiny helper he will not respond there are times you will send him 100 naira credit there are times you will say sir just to appreciate you you will take out time to compose a text messages as if you will die there and he will just send you one word god bless you but he's working the day you now ask for help you have set a template there are people today if you ever see their text they are begging the moment the need is met they forget the relationships until the day a need arises uncle it's me again no it's junior say hey, i know you are junior what is the issue say uncle you know i mean i'm in 400 level now honestly i say are you the first to be there you are matured enough to start working uncle we are we are traveling somewhere we are going so and he says don't be stupid don't you ever call my line again most of you when you call your helpers this is what they tell you it's only when you have trouble that you call me anytime anybody tells you that you need to strengthen your relationship many of us have very bad relationship maintenance systems for as long i know many great people sadly some of them even great people i know they don't know how to keep relationships at all anytime you see their call one missed call two missed call they're in trouble they need a favor they need a help some of you are born again tongue talking but you are like that and you have closed doors closed doors your friend is celebrating a birthday you can never remember say i'm too busy are we together now your your whatever it is i'm too busy and you miss my friend i love him and you know sometimes you see him and the wife and the two children of course um not everybody will have access to come and visit me that's the privilege of friendship nobody is born with intimacy by default you walk your way into it listen i am a busy person it is true there are many people who say apostle i've been trying to see you what what ordinance do i have to see you what covenant do i have with who to see you i've been trying to see you you are not attending to me that's a foolish statement you should ask yourself those who have unlimited access what are they doing that's the key in time past there were offices i tried to access i've shared with you my story years ago when i went to look for a loan i won't tell you the amount i went to look for a loan in a bank these people wasted my time and did all kinds of things and i found out i had brain capital but no relationship capital and i made up my mind some of us the fire is getting hotter by the day and you think the key is to get a job quickly find relationships do you know there are people who are not working but relationship is paying them salary every month until they get a job yes sir i know people like that my mother has a relationship with me forever my father has a relationship with me forever my siblings have relationships with me forever as i rise they rise it's called blessed by association listen once the easiest way to be rich is to find somebody building something great and invest quickly and help the person rise and as you rise chop i chop i'm teaching you listen there you see the body of christ people there, there are many foolish people in the body of christ you watch people when they are starting you are the first to run your mouth i don't believe in them now you have access to them there are people years ago they had access to me they would have been some of the closest people to me today enjoying every blessing but they just saw it today now do you know the door you enter kicking your leg tomorrow you will feel a form so now that god gives you the opportunity there are people who use 50 naira to secure a relationship that is worth millions today that's wise investment the day that great man was looking for water you quickly carried your 50 naira the bible gives us a parable i don't have time in the bible where a man oh listen a man was about to be sacked by a king are we together and he knew he was in trouble he had been defrauding people a tax collector now they were going to throw him away do you know what he did he quickly called the people and said how much do you owe so so amount i reduce it for you ah 
and the moment they sat him he went back to them i scratch your back scratch my own too now this is a system that the world uses but believers don't know this koinonia is very connected to several people you see us connected to the military we are connected to the police we are connected to medical personnel we are connected to politicians because you rise through a network of relationships you don't know which it's not just about being selfish it's the way it happens relationships everybody shout relationships some of us if our parents knew this some of them their classmates today are the ministers in charge of abc no relationship to bless them is that true do you know there are people who sit down today and calls just come they call them one old oh, ah promise where are you I'm, I'm i'm trusting god for what come 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 there's create one committee that doesn't make sense and say sit down there you are the chairman in charge of it after, when god helps you after seven months they say okay that's all right it's dissolved just because you must be blessed ask mephibosheth how he paid for royalty relationships a man who was crippled are you learning what i'm ask the disciples how they became apostles relationship even when they ran away for three days when jesus resurrected they quickly apologized lord i'm sorry i'm still on your team and they became apostles are you hearing what i'm saying many of you right here you come for koinonia all the time and you have a a resentful attitude this brother you are not you are not my class you are not wearing my shoe rather than for you to sit down and say ah this brother is always taking notes god is taking him somewhere he may have one thousand two hundred naira one shoe one whatever but what is entering his spirit is programming him for greatness some of you resent every other person who is not you you are losing you are losing big time in life just this law alone will bless you i am i am i am a benefactor of relationships by the grace of god god has connected our ministry with all kinds of people oh, there is there is nothing at this level by the grace of god there is nobody within our sphere of influence that we want to meet that we cannot meet it's impossible somebody knows somebody do you know statistically they say you are four people away from anybody you want to meet four people four people there are others who will invite a guest minister in the capacity of his office and pay one million honorarium someone else because of relationship he said no 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 whatever you know i mean we are together i pray for you from the depth of my heart that the the power of relationships will show in your life from today please sit down many times you see an old woman carrying firewood on her head firewood that is as heavy as five men she puts it on her head walking the question i ask is where are her relationships this mama is 70 years she spent 70 years on earth and you cannot build a relationship with one successful person listen if you are up to 25 years hearing me and there is no one successful person in your life you are really failing hear what i'm saying you are really failing there is nobody to run to when things go bad there are people like that you are a pastor you want to hold a convention and you are stranded financially nobody in your circle of influence has reason to say please sir cover my shame for me relationships cover your shame relationships cover your shame who is standing in for you who is helping you rise you go to an oil company holding your certificate and you knock at the gate and the gate man says yes say I, I prayed and god led me to come and submit my cv he says bring it as he collects it he throws it inside a dustbin and you go back rejoicing 
and keep seeing visions of yourself working in an oil company till you are past the age that they will receive you because there's no relationship another unbeliever let me tell you this and i say this sincerely this is one secret that muslims have relationships relationships you will hardly see a muslim child go somewhere that his father cannot create that's why some of course I, I i love them we love muslims and all of that and you find out that there are some of them you see them in your schools they, don't, they are not even serious because they know that relationship has already had they had the decree before they started so this is just a ceremony for all of that to happen because relationship has created a decree somewhere there is a space that has been created since they were in 200 level waiting for them to occupy but believers don't have that wisdom i show you the life of god versus the principles of god are we together there is no day in my life that relationship does not bless me there is no day i say it may god forgive me if i'm lying but it's true there is no day in my life that relationship does not bless me you cook by yourself you wash your clothes by yourself you intercede for yourself no relationship nobody seen anything about you to pray for you by yourself you are looking for favor by yourself they drive you alone you walk alone you counsel yourself you motivate Abba. say relationships say the law of relationships i made a statement years ago and i repeat it every once and again that we will all be great right and the greater part is that we will all know ourselves praise god sorry about that some of you here um will never have any helper do you know why you are anti-friendship your persona is anti-friendship you are resentful you are rude you are callous you are very very offensive in your approach turn and tell one another good evening and somebody turns and you are looking at the person you are not my class stop that oh listen he that wants friends must first show himself humble yourself in this training ground where nobody knows who is who it's only god that knows who's destiny you see me hug people here some of you see me hug our little children and you think that uh, i'm just hugging them i will continue to hug them because at their age we're not thinking like them that means most likely they'll be better than us at age 12 some of us were absolutely foolish these children at age 12 pray in tongues love god join prayer department some of them i mean look at a destiny like an arrow and you are missing an opportunity to invest you now come when it's too late when the person has become a big man do you know there are people who call my phone all the time sending insults and saying apostle uh, whatever it is they call you you are claiming you don't know me i say i don't know you i don't know you i don't know you don't bully me i don't know you listen when you celebrate a great man when he's great it's too late mm. you came way too late you don't celebrate greatness when greatness manifests you celebrate greatness in the process you participate in it that's why i'm excited for you because i have the privilege of participating in your success how in the world can i fail listen with all humility there are people today by the grace of god that i have raised who will never allow me beg for bread till jesus comes even if i decide to be careless and i i stop obeying any law of lifting you have sat down on on a you know how they do what they call it uh, um, let me not talk business here all those uh, businesses that you do you sit down you bring somebody and you keep rising that's how you can sit on a chair and keep rising like that forever because you paid the price to build someone are you hear what i'm saying now question whose destiny are you investing in today question who will remember you 
when he gets to the throne if you are not there when i'm in the cave don't expect to be there when i'm on the throne if you were not there when i was on the cave don't expect to be featured there are, there are many lousy people in the body of christ with an entitlement mentality you hear them say i knew you i knew where you were not in what did you do about it when i was walking my way when i was hungry did you ever give me water you were part of those grumbling and talking and now that rejected stone has become the chief cornerstone you are now seeing the man of god in glory and power and you are saying we are colleagues we are not colleagues no sir listen be careful and don't let men bully you with their complacency and their inability to invest in your relationship anybody who does not think you are worth a good relationship should not be found in your future there are people listen i'm rounding up there are some of you many people who would have lifted you look at you now and they think you are failures because of what is happening they gist about you sometimes you hear it sometimes they say it to your face but they don't know what it is that is happening and then when you rise you see them come with entitlement mentality you should give me a house you should give me a car and you ask them why they say because i knew you before no sir everybody who believed in me when i was nothing is impossible for them to fail in life because they took a risk by believing in someone they never saw any result and now their risk is yielding dividends so it is not wickedness when you see somebody bless somebody there are people in my life no matter how foolish and stupid they become i'm bound to them forever because they believed in me when i was nothing rejoice not over me my enemies for though i fall yet i will rise again are you hearing what i'm saying some of you in the whole of your family nobody believes in you they've told you to your face you will not amount to anything obey these laws and watch god shock every one of them to their knees apostle i want to be blessed what are you doing i just need hundred thousand to start a business who fooled you that that's all it takes to succeed you see that you have two tiers of rice in your house it can pay for a growing relationship you can cook food invite five of your friends and say look just to honor you guys i know that i don't have much now but i just love you after 10 years they will tell you remember that our rice now enter this five-star hotel let's now eat my own version of the rice and someone looks at you listen someone looks at say and you say you you shouldn't be in the palace you say i paid for it since <laughs> i paid for the palace when i could afford it i show you wisdom keys that men are using to climb ladders of greatness so you can see somebody in the future come you see somebody in the future no charisma no anointing yet favor will never stop leaving him everybody knows him we're about leaving be that today and a man of god who also came for a ministration the man of god came for a ministration i was about to enter the car let's go and then um the protocol stopped me and said please i need to attend to him i turned to him and i said hello sir i don't know you he said sir you don't need to know me i came for a ministration and i had you were around i stopped the guy was holding a seed in his hand say relationships there are people who will be talking who should we lift here and somebody will say please i have one daughter i have one son not my biological child but this child is so well well mannered very lovely person the person did not read this course but that person has character and say send for that person quickly you see people who read something that has no business with what they are doing yet they keep rising to be directors relationships keep promoting them tonight we are going to pray i will stop here no one will continue the remaining next week there are plenty laws i will share with you the easiest way to succeed is to invest in relationships relationship is a stream of income when you are writing all your streams of income write relationships it will cost you now because under relationships you don't sell anything you give for free sometimes you need to be a fool investing in relationships some of you after this meeting 
you need to go and sit down and say lord who are the five most valuable people in my life and start calling them sometimes you don't even need five you just need one and say sir do you know there are people in my life who send credit all the time they don't have much it may be hundred naira. i'm not saying you should do it but i see the passion they are making to establish a relationship with me billy graham we talk about billy graham as the great evangelist do you know one of the reasons why he was great he had endorsements of every president before that happened it was said every time billy graham would write letters to members of parliament and the president of the united states wanting meeting with them they would throw away the letter he kept doing it and one day just one person attended to him a day will come the door will open don't think you will knock once and it will open you see the thing about relationship is that because of what you are looking for sometimes it will have to sting your ego don't be embarrassed pay the price that's the price for the value you are looking for i see a number of men of god sometimes they want to see me maybe for a meeting and they come once twice and say please what is the big deal about this one please we are all equal before god and i say what an unwise person i have pursued men with anointings i have humbled myself i have stayed for weeks and months just to encounter people and the encounter was not more than two minutes because of value i have pursued uncommon mentors i have spent money i have sown seeds i still sow seeds into the lives of people to maintain relationship what have you done that you are complaining there are people just to stand after service and be patient everybody's pulling their mouth it's too late apostle i need to see you specially um, um and i say look look I, I may not have all the time and then you see them frowning Abba, let's respect value no great man needs you you are the one who needs him so you must pay the price pay the price when i meet people who have what i look for i don't go as apostle joshua selman if it means me sweeping the office you've heard my testimony of when i wanted to take a trip to the u.s to go and scrub the toilets of charles and francis hunter i was not going there as colleagues i wanted to go and scrub their toilets for two weeks it pained me when they died and i didn't meet them relationships how do you travel to us to go and scrub toilet if you can you snap yourself scrubbing toilet and put on facebook and say it is the lord's doing most people who don't understand this will say look at how this person is disgracing himself never be embarrassed to invest in quality destiny relationships there are useless relationships that are going nowhere cut them this night i release the grace on you there are people who are going nowhere and they are forcing you you come around them you don't love god you don't think you don't plan you don't do nothing and they say two weeks you've not leave them all love is a command relationship is not choose your friends it is within your power if you are not going where i'm going i love you but you have to stay we can greet in church we can greet around but you cannot be my destiny friend not having my convictions a man who has to make you change your conviction in his presence is not a destiny friend leave them who are you believing in right now that you have not seen anything in their life who are you believing right now some of these people some of them are outside they may be sitting smelly clothes they can't afford perfume torn clothes but they are receiving you can reject them because of the privilege that you have and tomorrow you did not know that that was your governor you were kicking away oh jerusalem jerusalem you did not know your time of visitation your time came and you allowed it to pass you we are going to cry to god tonight father i want to engage the law of relationships stand up please pray rise up on your feet i'd like you to thank god for this message we just started introducing it tonight lift your hands and thank god open your mouth and say god thank you you are revealing to me the keys you are revealing to me the keys you are revealing to me the keys you are revealing to me the keys
Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. Come be God. Many of you don't know this gentleman. You see this guy? This guy would never fail in life. Ask me why. Because when we started, listen carefully. When he and I started, the time we used to meet in the campus and sit on his slab. And this gentleman, the same way he's holding his guitar. That's how he, he was a person who was holding the guitar and playing. And he would, everybody usually will be seated when it's time to preach. But he will have to stand with me. There's another dear lady, she was the one who would hold light for me. That's her work. She did it joyfully. Bring her touch light. Every time I was going to read a scripture, she would do it joyfully. Those two people will never, never beg for bread, not when I'm alive. Yes, no, 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 it's not amen. It's, it's a reality. I'm serious about it. I can mention names of people. I told you about my principal who I went to visit early this year and I looked at him. He had become an old man now. And I said, God, in my lifetime, please let me build a house for this man and buy a car for him and bless him with a seed that brings tears from his eyes before he goes to me. It's a covenant I made with myself. What did he do? He believed in me. I remember seeing me as a young boy and he looked at me and said, you are smart. He had a little keyboard and he called me to come and sit down. And I had come from a background of so much complex and pain. He made the entire school to gather in front of me and he said I should play keyboard for them. And that was the beginning of the healing process for inferiority that today nations are getting blessed from. I was not born this way. Never forget those who believed in you when you were nothing. You see, let me tell you something about greatness. As you start rising, levels will change. Don't let your mind change. Because you will start seeing psychophants. People who you meet on the journey and they are there to make it look like at your level should you now be relating with these ones. This woman used to sweep your house. Now you have become a big woman. You are even going to marry a millionaire. Just find 2,000 and let her go away. Please, this smelly woman, not your class. A wise person will say, if she could sweep my house when I had nothing, she deserves to sweep my palace. She even deserves a palace of her own. Relationships. Anything money can buy, relationship can buy it. You have been paying for too many things using finances. Start using relationships. Lift your voice and cry. Think I God bless my Lord. Lift your voice and say, Lord, connect me. Connect me. Connect me. Pray. Connect me. Jato Salaka de Bregadia. Jeprokoto Salabakaria. I know our time is gone, but pray. I'm handing to you keys that will make your life remarkable. Man of God, pray for relationships. Strategic relationships. Covenant relationships. I like you to pray and say, Lord, take away the spirit of offense because offense is the killer of relationships. Hear me? Your friends will never be perfect people, just like you are not. There are many of you, you're, you're sad. You can never have a friend for two weeks and not talk about A to B and talk about B to C. It's a devilish attitude. I like you to pray and say, Lord, take that attitude out of my life. Bitterness or offense. Grace to forbear. Grace to endure the weaknesses of my destiny friends. Grace to endure the weaknesses of my valuable friends. Pray. Listen, listen, 
Pastor Femi come. Many of you don't know why you see me stand with Pastor Femi. It's not just because Pastor Femi is my son in the gospel. Let me tell you. Do you know before he became a pastor, Pastor Femi used to be the one to carry equipment for worship team. This worship team you see. He was, he would carry the equipment and sit down in Rema Chapel. They will finish rehearsal. He will help to close and God was watching. God was watching. Foolish people were saying you are wasting time. Why are you human worship? And God was watching. God does not lift proud people. God lifts those who can serve with their heart and their life. Gradually, gradually, occasionally he would play bass guitar. Humble himself. Even when he became a pastor, there were times he was playing bass guitar. One day I had to tell him, no, it's okay. The person assisting him now, Francis. Francis is a friend of Charles. Francis was in protocol. Look at how God is lifting people except you. God is lifting people except you because pride has still kept you where you are. Big manism. There are people who humble themselves to serve. There are people in this ministry. The level of grace they have, they can be geos of great ministries. Yet you see them doing very frail activities. Some of them are in protocol, running around. He resisted the proud. He gives grace to the humble. You see what God has done in his life today. God bless you. Aaron, come. Let me give you. Come, Aaron. Many of you do not know that the first person who was the protocol of UNI was Aaron. This gentleman you see standing here. When we were doing crusades, nothing to write home about. Owing oh, everybody everywhere. Just moving by faith. It was Aaron who was in charge of logistics and buses. I remember shouting at them and pushing them and all of these things. This guy you see. Aaron. Yet till today, the way he is, you still see him greet some of the leaders. Some of these people are young. They are younger than him by far in age. Younger than him in experience and all of that. And you see him still act and where there is an opportunity, you see him serve with all his heart. Aaron is one person who has served me and served God with his life. And I've made a vow and a covenant, no matter what happens, I will never watch him and his children beg for bread. Thank you, Aaron. I love you. Question. A few years from now, who is going to call you? Do you know a Jimmy's wife, this lady you see, as of 2010, she was a member of protocol. Protocol, when we're doing Kingdom Well Summit. Had not married her husband yet. Protocol. Serving with all her heart. Establishing quality relationships. Today, look at their children. All copying what the parents are doing. You are allowing time to pass. God is sending strategic people to your life. You insult everybody who is not you. You are out to look for imperfections. This lady is too loud. This person is too this. It is true they have those issues. But can you ignore it and see that God is connecting you with a ladder that will wipe your tears forever? Our parents ignored it. And today they keep frowning at televisions when they see their colleagues. Pray one minute. Open my eyes to see those who are my destiny helpers. Open my eyes to see the relationship I must protect at all costs. Open my eyes, oh God, to see the relationship. Not all relationships are worth keeping. Not all relationships are worth protecting. But I tell you, there are relationships that are worth keeping forever. Assignment as you go back home today, 
or tomorrow, go and write the list of the five most valuable relationships in your life and begin to invest unashamedly in them. Five people that God has brought in your life that you know you need, no matter what it is. You don't have to invest in everybody. There are people after 20 years, it's still a waste. But let me tell you, there are relationships you must protect at all costs. Some of us are penny wise and pound foolish. We can destroy today or try to enjoy today. We destroy a relationship that is long lasting. I have seen people, I have counseled people who destroyed relationships with great people over trivial matters. Matters of marriage, matters of money, matters of job, matters of reputation, matters of ego. Bro, great relationships with people. I know great men today who have vowed in my presence that they will never help certain people because of their attitude. The authorized system to present your request to heaven is prayer and supplication backed up by thanksgiving as a sign of faith that you did not pray to an animal. You prayed to an intelligent God seated in the heavens. Let me tell you something. If you don't end your prayer, a quality prayer giving thanks, you missed out a major portion. It's like cooking and forgetting salt and forgetting maggi and say no problem, just eat it like that. There is a serious problem. Now you may say the quantity of salt is small, but don't put it and see how it alters the taste. Believers do not pray. We live in a time and age where pray for me is the most popular language among believers. Pray for me. Prayer department, pray for me. Benga, promise, pray for me. Pastor Alpha, I'm not against uh, maybe a higher anointing helping you. But we have lazy people. There are all kinds of financial seeds now. There is a battle seed. You know what a battle seed is? That means I don't have the time and the luxury to pray. So what happens is that I encourage you with a seed. And with that seed, you will spend the night praying while I'm sleeping. See, let's not lie to ourselves here. We are Christians. Are we together? The Bible says, let your request. You are the one in that fire. You are the one who wants to come out. Let your request know. Make it known through prayer the first system of legislature is prayer let's look at first timothy 2 long reading from verse 1 to 8 quickly please first timothy chapter 2 verse 1 to 8 and then i'll share a few things about prayer and um i may just give us three or four dimensions of dom of dominion then we'll round up all right first timothy chapter 2 first timothy are we still there media first timothy chapter 2 from verse 1 we're reading down to 8 i exhort therefore this is paul now speaking to his son in the gospel timothy that first of all what supplications prayers intercession are you seeing now paul obeying that rule too and giving of thanks be made for what all men Prayer is important. Intercession. Intercession. Intercession is not just praying for souls. Intercession is agreeing with God on behalf of people that certain things still find expression on the earth. Because of the benefit of that thing, even to you as a person. Read on. Verse 2. Then he says to pray for what? Kings. And for all that are in authority. Does it look like Nigeria is doing this? We are not doing it all. We are not praying for kings. We are not praying for those in authority. We are complaining and we are angry. We are saying all kinds of things. Bringing all kinds of political things. I'm teaching you how kings dominate. How many workers pray for their bosses? There is a reason why God says to pray for your superiors. He says, and for kings and all that are in what? any kind of authority why that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life that we including you the person praying 
there is an effect of their misgovernance on you and so for that sake you have to pray and say lord you i, I trust you to come in that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty if we do not intercede for leaders we don't intercede for nigeria and for africa you don't intercede for your boss let me tell you something listen it's a very serious secret i want to share with you every time you pray for your superior you have access to their heart no matter how godless they are practice this and watch wonders that happen every time you pray for your superiors God grants you access to their hearts. Oh, that stupid boss. Stupid, stupid man. He removed 10,000 from my salary. God is hearing you. Now, you would think he will win because it's true that he removed that. There is something about authority that even God respects. He says, pray that we may lead a peaceable and quiet life in godliness and honesty. Verse 3. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. Uh-huh. Who will have all men to be what? Be saved. We need to pray and intercede. Do you know? Hold on. Do you know the decadence in society is because there are many people who are not saved? Are we together? Step into a village, a community where there is a, there is a spread of unbelievers. There's only one church in that city. Only one pastor who is not even sure he's born again. Let me tell you hell will prevail over that city do you know why because there is no spiritual resistance nobody is saved children are in occult from three years four years five years you see them telling you stories that will make you not sleep you know why because god does not have envoys within those territory it matters that god finds a people it is in the multitude of men that the king's honor lies when God does not have men in a city, it affects the growth of that place. There are cities in the world, there are cities in Nigeria where God has very little men and we know what happens to the cause of the kingdom within those territories. There is darkness, there is oppression and all kinds of things. And then it says that God will have all men to what? Not only be saved, comma, but to come into the knowledge of the truth because there are people who are saved but ignorance can keep a society are you seeing how we dominate you step into a society and you see poor people everywhere the highest person has just one house with mud and you are looking and say lord there is there are levels of truth that we do not know the average family within that territory lasts only five years all the children are armed robbers by 10 the ladies marry by 12 not because they want to marry once she's 11 11 and a half she's pregnant are we together and all of a sudden you find out that there's disobedience stealing smoking drinking all kinds of decadence the bible says that god wants men to come into the knowledge of the truth an irresponsible man who cannot take care of his family and you are within that territory the Bible says you can begin to dominate over that territory. It's a lost art that we don't know in church again. To pray over territories until we shift the climate in that territory and begin to cause things to happen. Read the world revival. Read revivals that have passed. There were men who prayed non-stop for 100 years for certain things to happen. Some of us, our mothers started praying since we were born now you are 20 years you wanted to get into something that, that you didn't like that climate there was already a build up a spiritual fortification we do not pray over environments we do not pray over territories we do not intercede that god will step in and say lord invade zaria have you noticed the developments that have been happening in zaria in recent times there used to be old buildings everywhere because you see a city assumes the shape of the spirit that controls it yes the economy of a city the 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 level of civilization in that city is a reflection of the controlling powers 
is one of the ways you know that a city is under oppression there are many of us like that you enter your city you see red zings everywhere uncompleted buildings everywhere those traits are symbols they are signs they are tokens they are representations of controlling powers over cities and the bible says when we want to begin to liberate cities not give me tea not give me bread i'm teaching you the prophetic and intercessory dimension of prayer where you begin to travel until you shift away the spiritual climate of territories for many years and it's still happening in zaria men and women zaria zaria is like a woman that has been pregnated with the prayers of the saints zaria is full of the history of moves after moves of men and women who have prayed some of them did not even know what was leading them every night every day in zaria there is always something happening somebody is praying somewhere in your room at the back of one fence somewhere under a tree prayer doesn't matter the location and gradually you begin to see now there is peace that we can be happy i mean look at this covering a road a main road like this in a city like zaria and nobody comes to oppress you those of you who have stayed long in this city knows that you know that these things were not like that ah that people can shake their hands that's what happens when people legislate one of the chiefest way for dominion is prayers please i don't know how to make you believe this there's no such thing as i'm not called into that ministry if you are called to reign the first symbol of your legislature is the ability to pray not just for your needs but to be supplied the burden of a territory to pray until the purposes of god are located over that territory comes to pass do you know why prayer meetings have the lowest turnout in many churches it's an attack and sadly many pastors many so people don't like to pray it's a lie with all humility i think one of the largest gatherings after koinonia in terms of the the prayers here in koinonia is the tuesday prayer meeting you see people rushing happy to pray you know why there is a spirit of prayer and supplication is more than desire you don't pray just using desire you may start with desire i've taught you consistency draws the spirit responsible to you every time you are doing a thing consistently because you have your own human will are we together you can take alcohol willingly it may not be by the influence of a spirit it doesn't mean you you are an alcoholic no but by the time you are taking gouda every day one week two weeks the spirit of drunkenness is drawn through your consistency that's how prayer is most people want to receive the impartation of prayer before they pray let me give you a big secret your consistency you are always going behind that fence every night one hour two hours you go back you carry your small rechargeable one hour two hours one day something will happen to you i guarantee you you will stand there and be praying and the heavens will open you will check your time and see that it's five o'clock events begin to launch in your life one day you go to pray and then you see somebody come to join you too you see this is how ministry starts i really feel I, and i don't say this in a condemning way i feel sorry for people who want to start ministry then they go and buy balloon they get a, a, a banner they get a, a posters they do offering bus offering bag they buy tray with water for the man of god and cheer and then they say come to our church no every church starts as a house of prayer those of you who god is calling into ministry let me tell you start calling people and say i'm starting a new church oh pastor femi you would like to come and visit maybe god is talking to you and you oppress people and say remember you are my classmate i mean i told you this thing right from 100 level so it's not new to you can you come and join me be the secretary you never start ministry that way every true ministry must register a track record in the spirit of a season of prolonged prayer non-stop i'm i'm telling you the foundation of a formidable ministry that is unshakable you must pray you must pray you must pray anything that attacks your prayer life is about to destroy your dominion did you hear what i said 
anything that attacks your prayer life i'm busy you know before i didn't have a job now i have a job and uh, i come back by nine o'clock if a thief holds a gun by one o'clock will you wake up or not if the thief says stand up stand up now otherwise i'm going to blow your head will you say thief let me tell you you came in the wrong day i came back from nine o'clock i mean i mean you two you know how nigerian jobs are they don't give us enough time can you come back in the morning you stand up why because there is you 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 already sense that thief has a gun holding it with one hand but there are spirits that fly around our territory and you snow your way until the scepter falls from your hand and you get up and talk and think that just because uh, you are confessing i change this ah, it takes prayer let's not mock ourselves hallelujah this is the pride that has destroyed many people who begin to see the anointing in their lives they just feel what is it this thing that you can do i can do it just give me chance and see listen let me tell you when you see people executing effortlessly they have paid the price in the secret place believe me believe me oh god is touching somebody now and you see somebody falling under the anointing you come with your own zeal and pride and say look god is the god of all flesh the, the curtain has been torn uh, you know left and right there's no priest again no mediator and and this is why many pastors mock themselves on stage we come up and stand bragging making our voices husky and god is here right now and uh, you're about to see what will happen here and at the end and you know members are very dangerous people they note everything you say you said the power of god will move so they're waiting at the end of it you try and say you people did not fast and then all these things and you say look this guy is it that you cannot play this keyboard because they think it's a charm clashing a cymbal and playing keyboard they are, they are they are charms like a genie that you invoke and people fall and usually they will find one light sister that can be shaking up and down say you stand up why do we do this listen power is real pay the price through prayer pay the price through prayer write four things that prayer does in terms of dominion number one prayer is responsible for building your discernment your growth and giving you direction prayer do you know i have discovered that over 60 percent i'll repeat what i just said but listen over 60 percent of the challenges that befall men on earth is the issue of direction direction what to do where to go lord should i be in zaria now or should i leave lord is this house your will for me or not if the issue of direction is sorted out many people will not be where they are prayer gives you access to discernment discernment to be able to test and sense the spirits behind operations and to be able to know how much the hand of god is in a system and a process so that you don't waste your time you don't have all that time prayer is responsible for spiritual growth look at me i will not boast of knowing everything about the kingdom but i want you to present one believer for me who is not a serious person of prayer but has grown so spiritually it's a lie it's impossible to pray and neglect the word because when you pray you must write something the holy spirit speaks when we pray if you have not had god for a long time it may not just be that your ears are blocked it may be that you have not you have not forced whatever is blocking your ears to be open discernment can be developed when you pray god speaks i don't mean prayer for two minutes in, in anger and annoyance and sleeping and waking up prayer with your heart heartfelt prayer lord you spoke to me about ministry speak to me what is wrong with this family nobody's rising nobody's succeeding the last person who would be great had a mysterious accident somewhere lord i'm making an inquiry i must find what is the mystery behind the wickedness in this family and all of a sudden the spirit of god starts speaking communicating to you get my message the voice of god 
speak to you many people do foolish things that's why a man of god can just get up and say i think that we should open five branches did you pray are you sure god was in it you know our fathers of faith used to ask and say is god in this thing it used to be like a little old school it's not old school oh it's not old school no matter what price you will pay to ascertain that god is in what you are doing please i beg you in the name of jesus pay it to marry pay it i think i, I god gave me a brain i feel like having 11 children you better pray you better pray pray don't let carnality drive us we live I, i'm very serious carnality has destroyed many people we don't seek god for direction we seek him when we have gone and messed up and it has backfired we now run and say god why didn't you stop me and god said me no i gave you a will i've already said let them have dominion if you return back to me prayer is a sign of humility it's a sign that you are aware that you are incapacitated prayer is a great sign of humility imagine that you make somebody maybe a director in your company and he never comes to your office to ask for questions never comes you are telling him if there's any confusion please come to me you call him after two weeks is there any problem? no 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 boss I'm, I'm okay i mean you just taught me and then you go and stand and check his unit and see the rubbish he's doing and say why didn't you come say boss i've told you Shabi, you say if i need i will come there you are destroying that man's company and your pride prayerlessness is pride though it's not just sin it's pride will i be able to live my life without prayer leading a ministry like this you know many of us is because we don't have any serious burden on you that has an eternal implication are we together when you know that let me tell you the truth ask those who are close to me i pray to get topics it doesn't mean i don't plan but i sit down and i pray lord please speak to me speak to me speak to me the goal is not just to carry out ministry calendar calendar events the goal is to find out make sure what you are saying is what the spirit is saying because when you say what god is not saying he cannot back you remember in the book of ezekiel is wherever the spirit goes that the cherubims follow you see that don't just come and bring nonsense and want god to back you god is not a houseboy we must respect him to prayer if you are here and you have never joined the prayer department even if it's for once for prayer why don't you make it this tuesday apostle i don't feel like praying that's why you should know your life is under attack so one way is to go where there is a family of believers and catch the fire say in the name of jesus i receive grace to return back to the place of consistent prayer how consistent is your prayer every day how many days every day we don't pray once a week we may take out serious time once a week we pray every day don't let some of this with all due respect some of these western jargons that has destroyed us you are in africa find out the history of africa the person who is a prayer warrior is still struggling to stand on his two legs you that you are not doing anything now you want a free job in one year free wife twins what, what kind of demand in this world oh come on pray take charge of climate you get up in the morning you are happy you are going to take a serious trip you are hearing that people are dying on the road it's not to plant fear you don't you don't send any prophecy into your morning carelessness here and there we live our lives and we are victims of circumstances we must return to the place of prayer what of families that used to pray before and god promoted them a little no prayer again daddy it's time to pray for you are, you are stupid if you come here again don't you know that i'm now the director see that see let me tell you any promotion and any lifting that steals your prayer life has affected you you better go back to god and create a system around your prayer truth be told 
there are some of us that may not have all that convenience to pray in the morning but you must find a time personally i'm a i'm a night person i have caught this mystery of night night prayers night silence concentration discernment fewer calls Shakatabata. oh god fire in my life fire in koinonia fire upon my enemies it's not our prayer life it's my prayer life my prayer life do you pray jesus prayed as the son of god as the son of god he didn't pray sometimes the bible say while it is early in the morning what will it see let me teach you please if you belong to any group here or any church or any fellowship talk to your people about prayer this is not just some 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 secret allocated to a pentecostal ministry if you don't pray you will be weak you will never be able to birth anything serious believe me you see something with satan when you don't pray he won't attack you yet satan is not a fool once he attacks you and the fire gets too hot you will run back and ask for forgiveness and start praying so he leaves you no prayer but you are still moving forward and then you laugh at those who are praying ah suffer ahead and he leaves you it's like a meter you keep going down down there is a level you go down you will just close you there first now that he has closed you that's when you see that in one week everything just goes haywire in your life are we together one week couples getting married they plan they are praying praying the moment they get married they throw god away finally our fears have been resolved and the devil says i'm coming he left jesus for a season jesus for a season came back again through peter jesus said i see you get lost came back through Judas. jesus said okay i allow you the hidden wisdom of god that paul saw please we must pray every church service must have a section allocated for prayer no matter how small i don't care whether it is a it is a uh, a, a bible study session is whatever it is a prayer should be part and parcel of any serious church service for step by step you are leading me and i will follow you all of my days why do we pray we pray to exercise spiritual influence over territories why do we pray as a system of dominion to exercise spiritual influence your church will never grow if you don't pray your church will never grow just because you are anointed no there are many anointed people who never experience growth you need to pray why because a great door and an effectual has been opened but many adversaries satan will try to paint pictures about you that discredits you before those who need your grace you must pray satan will veil the eyes of people to identify you you must pray don't assume pray it's better for there to be a prayer team and a worship team and no excellence in the church is very bad but at least it's better to have a prayer team and a worship team they are the two areas of attack in any church when satan wants to bring down a church listen there are two departments other departments are important don't get me wrong but he infiltrates their prayer team he infiltrates the place of psalmistry where the incense of worship is rising when satan cripples the worship team through bitterness offense are we together name it prayer people pride arrogance me too i am a i am a i i, I now have one small fellowship so don't talk to me anyhow if you are not giving me prayer to lead i'm not coming pride that's how it begins to bend We regulate the spiritual climate over territories through prayer. 
I shared with us, I think it was last week, of the vision that I saw of someone. I saw somebody fetching something on his hand. Like, you know how you fetch chaff and just blew it like this. And then I started seeing like sicknesses coming on people. We prayed last week here. Help me. See that? I saw it listen if you don't pray things will be happening above you you will never know and you will sit down who can stand against the lord no one can no one will who can stand against our king no one can, no one will. Oh, 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 victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. in one minute i like you to blast in the spirit just just shake up your spirit we are men and women of dominion two prayers we take charge of our climate charge of our territories we stay in the hands of evil Come on, pray, pray, believers. Shake of every evil, shake of every plot, shake of every agenda. In the name of Jesus. Shabranda Katana Koso do Pashkata Maratai Ekratekate Shakata Mata Bato Soto Pe Reketeketekete Ebrakata Barada Balada 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 Mata Brakato Soto Pe Ekreto Sheketeketekete Rakata Balada Balada Bos hallelujah listen let me believe us let me teach you something the moment you sense your climate the moment you sense a presence within your climate the moment you are lying down in the night and you are sensing like there's someone else in this room verify by blasting in tongues don't ask questions Japos Kataratosia Rekete Kashariata Kata. Help that lady, please. No matter what time of the night, whether it is raining or there is sun or moon. Hallelujah. Hold on. How about dreams? Some bad dreams are not from demons.
they are a sign they are the angels trying to tell you something is wrong wake up wake up the spirit is willing this body you have drunk it with food you have drunk it with carnality no capacity to stand up and legislate hallelujah hallelujah you're going to sit down shortly but listen to me if you don't have an allocation of special times to deal with spiritual issues in your life you are not growing you are not a spiritual person please hear me by god's grace and i say it with all humility i think with all humility i'll be one of the busiest persons in this place i travel all the time I don't pray at the same rate every day but you must allocate time time where if you if need be you switch your phone if you can keep it on keep it on but pray all this issue of i have a program somewhere i have a wedding somewhere is it not when you are alive i'm not talking of praying as a result of fear you are a king there is a scepter on your hand let them remember this word let them if you must sanitize your environment it is up to you fathers teach your children how to pray not just how to go to school teach them how to pray when you are praying carry them don't say they are small they are sleepy that's why we thank god for these are little ones if they sleep let them sleep while prayer is going hear me samuel was lying down close to the ark that's why he had the voice of god you don't hear the voice of God everywhere he said above the mercy seat below the cherubims there I will meet with you and I will relate with you intimately please sit down why do we pray prayer gives you the access to the heart of God and the heart of men let me teach you dominion why do we pray it gives you access hear me there are hardened men in our world who will never give you access to their heart there are wicked men who are holding what belongs to you they will never release it until God gives you their heart he said I will sing unto the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously that was the song of miriam that the horses and his riders has been thrown into the sea don't sit down wait and and allow people to waste your time and talk nonsense a lecturer somewhere is refusing to let you go you have been begging he's not listening he's saying bring this bring that or come and meet me somewhere you are saying sir let me move it's because you don't understand dominion all right sir i've heard you shut us Regete kotos kapari akata. Carry your cause, uh, your your cause form. Put it on the ground. Blast in tongues and declare, I may be your student in the physical, but I'm a king in the spirit. I decree and declare, you must let me go. Masas kota baya. Sign chapter three. Oh, regete kata kata. The next day you walk to the office good afternoon sir hey you again well, well, well as he's signing you are seeing the scepter is on your hands listen you are not the first to go through that problem if you don't know how to bail yourself out you can die in that problem and god is still on the throne there are few people who have experienced the victory that prayer brings people have experienced victories impartation prophetic words but that you prayed and turned the hand of things to work in your favor if that happens you will not backslide in prayer again some of us by the grace of god and with all humility we have been in places that only prayer could bring us out where you pray and you don't just pray alone you pray and tell the person what to say in the physical and you come out and you wait for that word look at how many of our parents not moving forward you are asking them what is wrong they say eh, you are seeing somebody was 50 years they fired the, an arrow his leg is not working i 
and now your father is about to be 50 and all of you in the family are watching and laughing watching and laughing you don't watch and laugh i've shared with you my story my father's younger brother died like a chicken my father's elder brother died like a chicken i have seen my mother's obituary in the spirit i stopped it come on now refuse to allow things just move around in your life you have you have a dream and you are already seeing them sack five people in your family you get up and keep the dream in your stomach until the day they sack them then you come as a fake prophet and say i saw it what did you do about it listen prophets cried in the bible when things happen and they did not see they said lord why did you hide this from me god hid things from prophets if you wanted it to happen because he knew if they saw it they would stop it do you know consistent prayer will shake certain spirits out of you by themselves they are lying down there quiet and you are being deceived that oh don't worry you no spirit can find expression in your life and they are quiet there you continue praying every day sometimes when you are praying you sense and then you calm down continue a day will come have you not seen people praying by themselves they get to a level where that spirit can no longer stay the fire becomes too hot it must jump out of them that's what is happening to some of you now and i command those devils i speak standing by this authority i invoke the power of my secret place and i decree and declare that if there be any spirit in this place by the god of heaven i curse them now i curse their operation i curse them now i curse their operation If you let the devil he will kill you i tell you this thing the bible says resist the devil resist the devil it didn't say discourse it didn't say keep watching things happen no favor every door has closed over you you are seeing that is an attack will you wait until you die or will you pray and force the gates to open Can we pray in one minute a favor provoking prayer and say i command the gates of favor open the way that dominion is enforced in the earth realm is by passing decrees the power of words write it down kings reign by passing decrees ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 4 media help us please we have to conserve time because i want us to pray kings reign by passing decrees the same way in the national house of assembly they sit down and legislate it passes first reading second reading and they pass it into law whoever violates that law has offended the federal government where the word of a king is there is what that means words if you are not a king your words don't have power the power is only for kings when they speak when you are royalty your words are not ordinary where the word of a king is there is power if you are not a king there is no power where the word of a king is passing decree is not just prayer passing decree is commanding realities to be established in the spirit that i decree and declare that nobody nobody becomes a victim of so 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 and so in this family that's a decree elijah passed a decree there will be no rain i make it so let me tell you something listen the diviners and the witches in our villages this is how they program the destiny of men 
they invoke decrees nobody crosses 25 in this family even when they die the decree is still in force until someone else who has authority and understanding comes and vetoes that decree there must always be a ruling statement in the atmosphere if you don't like the one over you change it change it change it growing up i didn't see very successful people from my paternal side there were not many successful people and the thing was like a cause able-bodied men but they never really become anything serious the list of the list is and i said no way oh no way no way no way no way where the word of a king is there is power what have you said about your life or what have you allowed to be said about your life it matters who you say amen to it matters what you say amen to don't listen to any kind of nonsense and say amen somebody looks at you and say all of you are failures you don't have to confront them but reject it immediately in your spirit i am not a failure i am not no 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 no, no. i reject it ah marriage is now you see the way it is i'm only praying for you i hope you will like your marriage you may not confront the person because you rebuke an elder not in public but you keep quiet in your heart no way mine is heaven on earth i make that choice decrease kings reign by decrease let me show you something isaiah 43 verse 26 isaiah 43 verse 26 while the media is trying to give us that i want you to write this down hebrews chapter 1 verse 3 the bible says god upholds all things by the word of his power even god uphold, upholds the universe read with me the b part please from let us everybody is projected one to read let us plead together uh-huh go ahead declare thou that what so how are you justified in the spirit you declare if you say i am free god says satan you had him he's done that's why the bible says let the redeemed of the lord say so not wish so let the unemployed who want jobs say so not wish so when confession is made with understanding it is powerful it no longer becomes vain babbling my life is surrounded by words i have built a circumference around my life with words like mysteries number three sit down the third way that dominion is enforced in the earth realm is through creativity and innovation now listen carefully i'll just give us four and then we're done for tonight or maybe we'll just stop here exodus 35 please give us 31 to 33 exodus 35 many believers do not know that creativity is spiritual this is talking about a man we call in the bible a popular scripture a man called bezalel are we together the tabernacle was about to be constructed and god had to move upon a man called bezalel to supply upon him the spirit of creativity so that he will invent he will innovate our world today especially the church we are bankrupt of creativity that's why we are not creativity is the system where you birth your seed to rule google apple amazon are we together all these people have demonstrated dominion through creativity you will never never be great in life if you rule alone your ideas must rule with you your seeds must rule with you you are too small to command dominion alone you must spread your seeds today zuckerberg is manifesting the dominion mandate because creativity afforded him to raise his seed in terms of a product facebook and it's all over and had filled him we're reading to 33 with the spirit of god in wisdom and understanding and in knowledge and all manner of workmanship or craftsmanship this is how to to dominate in your social environment the prayer that i've told you largely takes care of the spiritual climate 
decrees are spiritual now we are coming to this realm to manifest them you pray in the secret but there must be a physical equivalent to be able to match your dominion christians hear me this is where we miss it you pray and command the spirit of prosperity you pray and declare that i'm going to be a man of influence my family will never be small but then no creativity 32 and to devise curious works to walk in gold and in silver and in brass last verse and in the cutting of stones to set them and in carvings of wood and to make any manner of cunning work everybody say creativity listen bishop td jakes is an example of a man who has capitalized on the power of innovation and creativity to enforce dominion show me the products that are ruling the world that came from you what has come out from you by the grace of god today koinonia messages are seeds that have come out of this ministry seeds god's design is for kings to rule with their seeds to face your physical offspring but much more than that that which he has put within you must find expression when i look around and i see several ministries that are connected to us and i see what god is doing through them i am overjoyed because that's my seed when i look around when your book is going far that's your seed when your ideas are being executed and is blessing people is causing them to honor god and multiplying your influence that's your seed that's why i hate laziness laziness is anti-dominion mandate everybody say creativity when you talk about business invention coming up with products and influence the church is at the back we pray just like i said we fast just like i said but the spirit of invention is com almost completely out of the church we are behind in everything that is sociological we must change creativity the cloth you are wearing today is dominion through somebody's seeds versace gucci right angela galasso all of the designers in the world they are ruling through their seeds are we together Bishop David Oyedeko is helping to bring dominion to his seats. Somebody says, I read his book and I've been changed. Parents are your children, are your seats rising to take over. He says, his seat shall be mighty upon the earth. Psalms 112. His seat shall be mighty. His seat not have a mighty name. A big name. Is not a big life if your name is bigger than you that's a serious problem because it's possible a great name is not a great life your name can be greater than you when the queen of sheba heard about solomon she assumed he only had a great name so she came to test him and her conclusion was half of this was not told me it's, it is important that you outgrow your name so that whatever it is people hear about you is only a tip of the iceberg the day they meet you they say my god creativity how many ideas are supposed to rise today who is eating because of your creativity who is going to school today because of your creativity where are the clothes where are the books where are the schools where are the businesses? Where are the conglomerates? Where are the value-adding structures? We almost don't have it in church. We sit around and we brag and we're happy. That's why I encourage one of my goals is to pastor men of influence. I've said it like a national anthem. I will not pastor weak people. I'm not part of those people that tell lies and say it doesn't matter. No. That's why I'm a friend to politicians. That's why I'm a friend to kings. You don't have to be corrupted by them. But you can stand i believe in influence are we together is your seed ruling show me the company you set up show me the books you wrote who is passing yx because of something you have taught who is making reference to something that has come out of you are we getting blessed yes 
when you become a reference in an area your seed is ruling this is part of the dominion mandate it says be fruitful then you multiply how do you multiply they ask Ali Kodangote how many hours do you have in a day and he says multiply multiply I think eight hours by the number of workers I have that's how many hours I have in a day wise man no wonder he's a billionaire he has multiplied his time by creating seeds that are taken after him let me tell you something it is a cause to be the only one who can do what you do throughout your lifetime now God is a God of transference at a point in your life your, you should be able to end the right to now begin to pour yourself in someone else a mother who has five children none of them can cook that's a bad testimony for a mother a father who has children up to 20 has never taught them on finances has never taught them on marriage has never mentored them on being a man just leaves them to chance that's why many young people are not successful you know why there is no transference no transference in jewish days fathers worked with their sons when they became teenagers they said hey settle down let me teach you how to be a man you don't guess it i teach you manhood is responsibility this oh yeah i allocate a farm for you go and work but right now as a student if you are doing any other thing they say don't do any other thing no settle down school but you can go abroad and be schooling and scrubbing toilets and they say you're a very nice person you see how we make people lazy you see an able-bodied young man a christian tongue talker comes to stand in front of your house and say i've not eaten there are grasses everywhere grasses everywhere why don't you sit and say let me see how i can buy a machine and then start weeding people's grasses for money and then employ one or two of these people and while they are working for me i'm having lectures your seed is ruling listen I want you to be seed conscious most of us all we know about seed is money your seed is everything that comes from you capable of reproducing your influence is your seed it doesn't have to be human technology has made it possible for us to spread our seeds so you write a book you sit down and you say look the rate of failure from secondary school to university is a serious problem I think there is something that the people within SS2 to maybe 100 level do not understand you come up with a book you release it that's your seed that's dominion are we together when you open a restaurant and i come and i'm eating when i'm eating your food that's dominion because it came from you a product of your creativity listen write it down i will never be lazy again in my life this this cultural massage that is given to adults that makes adults feel like children an able-bodied young man gets up 10 o'clock 12 o'clock he's snoring around the bed say don't worry just leave him he's a last born very soon that brother will look at a lady somewhere and have the guts to go and tell his parents he wants to marry see this is i don't have a problem this is why sometimes you see and i'm being honest i know their parents here this is why sometimes when young guys or young ladies go and meet parents and say i want to marry and the parents say oh God, go and sit down first they get angry and say you are stopping my destiny but let's be sincere are you going to eat your fingers are you going to eat your fingers responsibility your seed apostle i don't have a job what did you read um i read physics education and you don't have a job why don't you open an extramoral center only five courses maths physics english uh, what was the fourth one chemistry and biology for them whatever it is you add five of them that's the only thing i'm doing and you mentor those people you charge one person ten thousand you you trust god and pray and have 50 to 100 students will you beg for bread again we want something for nothing this laziness in africa is a cause parents please i challenge you any of your child that is matured enough tell him from today listen you are not just going to be getting free money after every month mommy i need money the next time i see grass in this house there's no salary for you it looks harsh but you have to train them even if your children are prosperous they must be disciplined 
many lazy people will not like what i've said but that's why we keep marrying and giving birth to lazy people there is a dimension of dominion that comes through creativity don't ever say there is nothing i have to do you can cook who is eating your food you can make donut start in your room don't wait until you bring one hilarious budget of nine hundred thousand. who do you think will give you the money start in your room there are people roasting corn and god is watching them with honor and dignity very soon they will rise up and make a kind of popcorn that nobody has seen dominion they start exporting it We're about rounding up but lay your hands on your head and pray one minute lord everything you have buried within me that i'm to dominate with that seed i prophesy it must come out i command the books to come out i command the programs to come up are you praying please don't let the devil say you will not succeed do it and fail but prophesy let the catering school come out in the name of jesus let the exercise books come out in the name of Jesus. Let the award winning tailoring um, um, outfit come out. Let the extra moral center come out. Let the business come out. Let the bank come out. Let the investment house come out. hallelujah please sit down i want you to know after today i want you to go and sit down please especially if you are poor and broke and you are not doing anything don't just pray and say god when will you wipe my tears that's a foolish prayer go and sit down find a good friend and sit down and say no we have to do something we are do it and fail failure does not kill do it how much do you have 100,000 300,000 let's have an agreement and sit down at least you have 500 I have 500 you can buy one golf we can buy a golf and start put it on the road it's bringing 10 to 20,000 every week we are starting all this laziness around that people just do and say I'm a king you are not a king dominion through creativity in fact there is a message like that you can get it after this after the service some of you plot and your plating is unusually exceptional why don't you package it why don't you package it some of you sing worship team some of you are looking at me god is telling you it's time there are some of you there is a day worship team will produce the album but start writing songs write songs how many songs have you written two where will you write the rest god is helping me you are not serious you are absolutely not serious are you not seeing in the body of Christ now people are tapping into their innate creativity I'm not only a man of God and many other things I'm a businessman I'm a leader over people I'm a mentor to people everything God put in me will find expression there are books that will be written there are many other things that will be done dominion dominion covenant university landmark university dominion publishing house one time i was watching dr miles Munro's videos and he carried six books and he hid them and he said if there was no dr miles Munro, there will be no rediscovery of the kingdom there will be no spirit of leadership think how many corporations prosper today the world is waiting for yours stop waiting on god be serious some of you started writing one book god inspired it you wrote one page and you just left it be serious why don't you get a recorder ah i'm a public speaker start speaking don't wait until there are people speak on a recorder and listen to yourself and correct yourself god will not bring you on stage when you have not been well trained are we together there is a dimension of dominion that will come through creativity there is a dimension of dominion the Ali Kodangotes and the, the, the Oprah Winfrey's and the Bill Gates and even in the body of Christ, great men like the Papa Deboyes, the Wisdom Center. Think how many things have come out of people. You were never, the word education comes from a Latin word to draw from within. 
to draw from within not just to complete a number of courses are we together now our educational system we salute it but it's limited in many ways and one of it is in supplying stimulating creativity you must reinvent yourself there is no such thing as being educated you are learning or you are out don't say i'm educated you are either learning in an ongoing way or you are out make up your mind today that i will not be the one begging inconveniencing people running to people's houses sorry i don't know if god is speaking to you that you should help me are you i have been looking at me you you, you have to stop being a nuisance there is a dimension of dominion our parents rejected it our siblings have rejected it make sure you do not reject it that from tonight you will challenge yourself what is that that you have in your hands train yourself by god's grace there are uncommon mentors in every area in this house whether it is in business whether it is in finance whether it is in leadership koinonia is a heterogeneous collection of professionals in very many areas you have not identified them because you are not passionate pursuit is proof of passion you must find out and search who can help me I, I have a passion for leadership who can help me not to sit and say when will they organize something to help us now it will never happen we like free things we are careless and callous and you know we, we have to challenge ourselves it is the secret of poverty secret of poverty to sit down and hope one day it will happen I know Abba is it not the God of Koinonia I know one day he will visit me you can dance all your life and remain the way you are fall down under the anointing roll up and down and get up you have commanded dominion realities are ready to be released in the spirit but there is no creativity no innovation next week is miracle service is it oh dear i would have added one more part it's too late there are two more things i have to talk about there is a dimension of dominion that comes through wisdom and understanding let me just state them quickly maybe another time we'll do a recap i really apologize wisdom and understanding that's the next point part of the ministry of the dominion mandate we dominate by manifesting wisdom and understanding wisdom and understanding wisdom and understanding it's a long scripture but proverbs chapter 8 we, we don't have time but i want you to read all of it he was talking about wisdom he said by me kings reign and princes decree justice wisdom personified and understanding speaking he says let's look at a few verses at least proverbs chapter 8 we're out of time but please just um Bear with me for a few minutes and then we're done let's read verse 1 media please take note verse 1 and then we're reading verse 15 and 16 and 17 and 18 then we're reading verse 22 to 23 then we're reading verse 35 and 36 i'll help you in case you've forgotten let's start verse 1 then we are going to verse 15, 16, 17. Doth not wisdom cry, and understanding put forth her voice. So these are spirits, these are personalities, these are not just attributes that men have. Are we together? 15 now to 17. Then we are going 22 to 24. Verse 15 says, okay, by me kings reign, and princes decree what? Justice. 16 by me princes rule so how do you rule wisdom understanding and nobles even the judges of all the earth there's nobody walking in dominion who is bankrupt of wisdom and understanding 17 i love them that love me and those who seek me what you can seek wisdom later and not find it because it takes time 22 to 24 the Lord possessed me. Yay. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. Are you a Christian? The Lord possessed me what? In the beginning of his way. Before the works of old. 23. 
I was set up from everlasting from the beginning or ever the earth was. That means before this earth concept came, I was the mystery behind the dexterity of the earth. 24. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding in the water, I wish that we had more time, we would have read everything that was there. It was, it was, I mean, it, it was all of but but our time is gone let's read verse um let's read verse 34 35 36 last three verses now 34 35 36 blessed is the man that heareth me wisdom and understanding watching daily at my gates waiting at the post of my doors 35 for those who findeth me findeth life and shall obtain favor of the lord last verse but he that sinneth against me, help me, wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me, love death. They have chosen to be defeated in life. Anyone who hates wisdom, anyone who hates understanding, is the same thing as you have signed and say you can shoot me anywhere you see me. All they who hate me, love death. Wisdom and understanding. There is a dimension of the dominion mandate that requires wisdom insight into the systems of god and having the fortitude the faculty the comprehension the working knowledge of the principles and the mysteries of the kingdom knowing what to engage that is responsible for certain outcomes church growth or praise to wisdom and understanding there are keys you don't know it you will not experience it financial prosperity and increase is not luck there is a there is an exact technology to it influence has a system which of them do you know and which of them do you not know and then the last thing i'll talk about is legislature on the strength of the anointing and then we'll stop here yeah, we're going to pray there's no time there is a level of the dominion mandate that requires raw power power direct on sin direct on sin psalm 66 verse 3 say unto god how terrible art thou in thy ways through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies do what submit themselves to you submit themselves to you submit themselves to you through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves there are supernatural dimensions that must be produced directly by the anointing the healing of sick bodies changing impossible things bringing the power of god to bear the bible is full of dominion that happened by the raw power of God the finger of God the Bible says that he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder it takes power it takes power to reign in this wicked world the Bible says the whole world lies in wickedness much more than prayer it takes power I was teaching the school of ministry students and um, I was teaching them that one of the greatest advantages of a believer is your access to the anointing the anointing is a game changer it vetoes any and everything other factors are very important but show me a man who is lavishly anointed and I show you a man who can do good I show you a man who can walk practically in dominion Acts chapter 10 and verse 38 how God look at the extent to which God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power and the Bible says he went about doing good you don't do good just by a sincere heart it takes power to do good it takes power to get demons out of people oppressing them it takes power to prophesy over people and say in the name of Jesus Christ I change your story and their lives change he says for I am a man under authority I say unto one go and he goeth I say unto another come and he comes Jesus was speaking and he said verily verily I say unto you the works that I do ye shall also do and he says greater works greater works greater works greater works
one of the ways we must exercise dominion over the earth is to be a manifestation of the supernatural the raw power of god on the scene blind eyes opening deaf ears being unstopped the crippled being healed you enter your house and you state the power of witchcraft your presence that anointing that is within you what happens to others you are seeing that other people a calamity is destroying them and you come out of it in a supernatural way you compel men to find out when they threw shadrach meshach and abednego in the fire expecting it to burn them the power of god was brought to the scene they saw a fourth man looking like the son of god and all of a sudden the king saw and acknowledged they threw daniel in the den of the lion listen when you enter the same trouble others enter and you come out that's dominion that's dominion that's dominion there's recession eating and killing and destroying people in nigeria and all of a sudden you arise with such strength and dexterity every time you do something uncommon the world will stand at an attention to see it the world does not honor common things brothers and sisters this mandate was given to us by god it is the way we cause him to come to the scene is the way we represent him though we are few we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before this is the song i'll be singing forever holy is the lord holy is the lord listen everybody say dominion through power say it again dominion through power many of you have received strong impartations in koinonia but you are afraid of exercising dominion through them either because you think you are not a man of god so when someone is sick you try my number it doesn't work you try a jimmy's number any of the heads of department and then you get maybe any of the prayer leaders and then you now call sir can you pray for me one day you need to be angry and let today be that day that you go back home and your roommate says something is wrong i always have someone oppress me and he said no i i have been anointed in koinonia i i there is a dimension of dominion are we together you lay hands on that person and say in the name of jesus there are times that people come here and tell me their loved ones are sick i say give me your hands i lay my hands on them i say you carry that anointing and go with it our little children here return with testimonies i laid my hands on my father you must kill fear you must kill fear and go back someone says there is a problem you tell them look i'm a faithful member of koinonia the anointing there apostle may not have the time but i'm standing i'm representing god and i'm a good ambassador of this ministry let's pray if the person does not believe you that's all right and you pray some of you for the first time while you are holding that person he collapses like a pack of card and you too you are surprised you are starting you are growing your faith is being built you speak to the person he says do you know that i return back and from that day no oppression in my dream again the next time that person is in trouble he runs to you you see that we may not be many doing this but we are surrounded by many many william seymour alexander the way god's generals men and women who are doing it god is counting on us we cannot fail our generation god is counting on us all these facets of dominion when they find expression in you then you see that the kingdom can come dominion through prayers settling spiritual climates commanding the forces in the realm of the spirit to bow are we together dominion through creativity decrees you are sending words you are a speaking spirit commanding and influencing and shaping things and then your creativity your ideas your value giving you space in the marketplace nobody insults you and just says you're a christian and so you're a nobody if we're in church let's behave like church now that we're outside church you're a daft dummy you have nothing no you have something to offer to the world then the manifestation of wisdom and understanding wisdom is justified by her children the strange results in your life 
that become testaments to the fact that you are a custodian of keys given to you by the wisdom of God and finally dominion by manifesting the raw power of the Holy Ghost rise up on your feet we'll be singing forever holy is the lord holy is the lord holy is the lord let me prophesy to you before we pray i just sense in my spirit to speak over our lives many of us have lost things many of us have not seen the reality of dominion in our lives but i want to speak to you everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen Prophesy to yourself, hey, everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you. Hey, everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me. Turn it into a prayer. My scepter restored dominion enforced i declare it i decree lift your voice and pray the scepter the symbol of authority everything everything that was lost everything i pursue I overtake I pursue I overtake without fail I recover I pursue I overtake without fail I recover hallelujah hallelujah I like you to pray and say Lord every level that has been designed that I should enter by now in the realm of the spirit. I command that I must enter now in the physical, financially, spiritually, in influence. Every dimension, Joshua Selman, enter that dimension. Every spiritual dimension you are entering every dimension financially every dimension in ministry every dimension in influence sociologically i decree and declare prophesy upon yourself prophesy upon yourself prophesy upon yourself enough is enough I take charge. I take charge. Hallelujah. Last prayer point. I want us to pray and challenge every force of darkness. I say, I am back in charge. Back in charge. Lift your voice and pray. Shabbos, Katatosh, Lekatekate. I may have been a, I may have been a prodigal son, but I'm back in charge. In the name of Jesus, legislature by the Spirit, dominion by the Spirit. I create my realities, I create my possibilities by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Shabbat Sokoto Baratai. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now lift your hands. It's time for you to receive that grace. There is the spirit of the Lord. Isaiah 11. The spirit of dominion. 
Isaiah 11 there is the spirit of the Lord it's not just a name for the Holy Spirit it is a dimension of his work in a man the spirit of dominion is a rule thou I want to speak to you Jacopo Sakata right now in the name of Jesus I prophesy that everything that has been above you I release an anointing upon you to rise above every challenge right now in the name of Jesus take that fire now take that anointing now take that grace now in the name of Jesus I decree and declare whatever you are struggling with right now that you've been trying to come out and it's like he's burying you by the spirit of dominion I bring you out of it now I bring you out of it now I bring you out of it now I decree and declare right now in the name of Jesus the unction for fruitfulness receive it right now nothing dies in your hands receive it now receive it now number two the grace for multiplication many of you have never brought anything out of you you are only eating the seeds of others I command that your seed begins to rule now in the name of Jesus Christ from today as you open your mouth to utter words I decree and declare there will be a speedy performance a speedy performance as you pass the crease in the spirit there must be a speedy performance I decree and declare many of you have learned secrets in koinonia but the grace for you to walk in it is not yet there i command every mystery you have learned i empower you to begin to live by them i empower you to begin to live by them i force them to work for you the mystery of exemption in the name of jesus the mystery surrounding success i release them to produce for you in the name of jesus finally i pray for you the mantle and the strange grace for the supernatural miracles signs wonders the gift of the spirit i decree and declare prophecy word of knowledge access to mysteries in the name of jesus take it now take it now take it now take it now strange dimensions of the supernatural strange dimensions of the supernatural power to heal the sick power to cast out devils in the name of Jesus listen listen anyone fighting God in your life if you utter a word concerning them I declare that God backs you up immediately anyone who has added to the frustration of your family whether a spirit entity or a human entity right now I want you to agree with me I judge them by fire now I judge them now by the power of the Holy Ghost hear me any man that says over his dead body for you to walk in dominion I answer their prayers now may the earth open up and swallow them finally a dimension of the ministry of the Holy Spirit that you have never seen in your life some of you from this night there will be strange encounters supernatural encounters supernatural encounters visionary encounters receive that supply of the spirit in the name of Jesus Christ hello him Adonai thy kingdom come hello him
release you tonight to be a possessor no longer a wisher begin to possess the things that you have desired in the name of Jesus Christ everyone stand we're rounding up our time is gone tonight is a very strategic night please everyone stand inside outside there are people here the foundation of your working practically in dominion you joined us in the prayers but the truth is that your relationship there must be a restoration God gave man a, 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 a mandate at the beginning but there was a violation sin entered the system and corrupted the efficacy of this mandate you must encounter Christ before you talk of true dominion and there are people following us online several nations of the world there are people inside here and in any of the overflows you are saying man of God I truly need to return to Jesus I'm not playing games I know that I need Jesus this dominion thing is not a joke there are others you are saying I have given my life to Christ once but things just went in every direction in my life and I found myself derailing seriously I'm ready to return back home like the prodigal son to be granted the signet ring the scepter of royalty and the crown wherever you are our time is gone I'm going to count one to five please I want you to run wherever you are come to the front quickly now sustain the courage to come quickly God bless you God bless you there are people coming overflow one two three join them quickly join them quickly you can stand you can stand on your feet keep coming Koinonia are you celebrating them there's fire on the mountain and you have to run 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 to Jesus keep coming please if you are coming quickly I want to lead them to pray now don't sit down there and say man of God I I'm not sure if you are not sure join them quickly it looks like I gave and I came out for altar call one day I don't know the name of what I did join them clarify there's no room for any confusion when the Titanic sank there were only two names those who were lost and those who were left you are not sure join them join them quickly my father is a pastor that's not the issue join them quickly I'm a worker in church it doesn't matter join them quickly hallelujah praise the Lord I sincerely appreciate and honor every one of you for coming to make this decision it takes courage to come I want to pray for you quickly what you are doing is not a recitation is in every way supernatural lift your right hand and pray this sincerely let your ears hear what your mouth is saying say Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I believe in you, I believe in you. tonight I declare that you are the son of God that you died for me you shed your blood for me you came back to life for me tonight I receive your life into my spirit I declare that Jesus is Lord over my life from today the Holy Spirit lives within me in the name of Jesus Father, thank you. Thank you. I, I decree and declare that your sins are forgiven. I decree and declare that you stand blameless before the throne. I declare that from today, the life of God is at work in you. You begin to move forward ever and backward never. In the name of Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages, subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. the face of development lord grant me the discipline